radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Well, 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 good evening. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. For the Masses. That's right. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, December 5th, 2018. 339 days into the new year. There are just 26 days left. And as always, we are live from a bunker in the middle of beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking? How you doing? All right. It's going to be a great show tonight. And if you are watching me on the bunker cam, you know now it's cold and rainy here in Southern California. I'm cold. I haven't thawed out. I got a jacket on. I'm in the studio. I need some gloves. I wish I had a scarf. I got my Elvis scarf. I'll do that tomorrow night. I'll do that for everybody on the bunker cam. All right. All right. Tonight, very special guest. I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. Independent filmmaker Mark Borchardt is here. That's right. Mark Borchardt is here. And we are going to discuss his new film, The Dundee Project, which is about the UFO Days uh, Festival in Dundee, Wisconsin. And we're going to talk about filmmaking. We're going to talk about him. I'm sure we're going to get some music in. And uh, maybe we'll talk a little food, too, as well. We're going to do everything tonight with Mark. I've been looking forward to having him on as a guest for a very long time. And a little note about tonight's show. This is the thing. I've been following Mark for for a long time. Big fan. Big, big, big fan. And uh, I got an email from our producer, uh, Renee, and I think it was last week, and she, you know, I get this email, Jimmy, yeah, you know, Mark Borchardt, and I, and I saw, went, yeah, that's, yeah, right? So anyway, I wrote Renee back, and I almost said, you handle it, and then I backed up and said, you know what, I, I accept this challenge, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase Mark down, and I did, and uh, there you go, so nice surprise announcement tonight. Uh, we've got more Mark Borchardt here and, and there you go. So just, just sit down, relax wherever you are, get comfortable and enjoy the conversation tonight. Tomorrow night is another fader night. Teresa Yanaris is going to be here with a divine frequency on the airwaves, followed by open lines all night long. And then, uh, Friday I'm off, but then I head over to, uh, Coast to Coast AM, and I'll be uh, uh, hosting over at Coast on Saturday and Sunday. So uh, we're not stopping. We're just going to keep this uh, keep this train on the tracks all the way through. <laughs> and wait, to, and next week, what we've got lined up. I mean, it's one of those things. 
you know, because we had such an amazing week here and last week, and the week, you know, it, it's just uh, the the weeks, the shows turn into months and years, but they've always always been great. But next week, I look at that schedule, and I'm blessed, I'm humbled, and what a great week we have got lined up for everybody next week. So there you go. And uh, now, you can follow us and and send us requests and and keep up with us over at OnSteller, onsteller onsteller.com, the new social network, onsteller.com. When you get there, send me a friend request. Um, I did notice I was over there over the last couple of days, and I'm so backed up on friend requests. Okay, so I will catch up with everybody. I, I promise. I know that there's some of you out there going, man, church, man. You know, you know, I'm being ignored. This is not cool. It's 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 tough to keep up with. Okay, so I, I promise I'll, I'll I'll catch up with everybody. Uh, end of day tomorrow. Deal, deal. Okay, but do send me a friend request over there. All right, and you know what to do on Twitter, at J Church Radio. And tonight, just like every other night, we are going to go through two, three, four thousand tweets on this show. Okay, now, if you want to check out what what that looks like, <laughs> what, what that kind of Twitter activity with this audience is like in the conversations... Just head over to Twitter. Send me a, a, or you know, you can follow me on Twitter, but uh, use hashtag F2B. That is the sandbox. It is just amazing. And I'm just sitting here, and I, I, I say it every night on the air, right? Twitter is live. Well, it is. It's right in front of me. And I'm just watching it just like everybody else. Click, 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 click. And the engagement that everybody has with these conversations. We use TweetDeck. Get TweetDeck no matter what. And uh, it, it runs automatically. It's not like Twitter where you have to go. Well, it's a Twitter product, but you don't have to click on notifications or updates or anything like that. It's just any time anybody posts anything, it just advances. It's like a slot machine. It's really, really cool. So get TweetDeck, hashtag F2B, come over and hang out with all of us. We have two chat rooms. One over at Spreaker, one over at KGRA The Planet. If that's what you would like to do, you can do that. And also email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. If you have any questions for myself or Mark tonight on the show, like any other night, hashtag F2BQ, which means fade to black questions. Yeah, yeah. And you can do it right there. I love Frank Zappa. I love, I hope. That everybody, that when I do a, a Zappaism like that, yeah, right? The central scrutinizer, right? Yeah, jelly donuts. If, uh, <laughs> I, I just hope you catch that stuff. Ah, oh, Joe's Garage, what a great album. Okay, let's move on. Let's get this show cracking. Breaking news today, by the way. The French government caved. That's right. They announced today that it has dropped the fuel tax hike plan that sparked this massive unrest over in Paris with the uh, the yellow vest protest, as they have been called. And Paris is burning, right? Paris, Paris burning. Crazy. Watching the videos of the streets of Paris with the burned out cars. And it's just, you know what? The the people have spoken, and you need to respond when they, <laughs> that's it, and they have. So it got suspended with a half-year moratorium. So it's at least, it looks like it's out for the 2019 budget, and I doubt that they go back and revisit this. they got to figure out some other things to do. But for now, the fuel tax hike plan has been canceled. There you go. All right, come join us. For the 2019 Conscious Life Expo right here in Los Angeles, California. Last year, 15,000 people. 15,000 people at that conference. So come and join us. The 2019 Conscious Life Expo. This year, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Chariots of the Gods with Eric Von Daniken. That's right. I have the honor of hosting the panel this year with Eric, uh, Linda Moulton Howe, Jason Martell, Billy Carson, and David Wilcock. There is obviously 
going to be some cool stuff going down at this panel for Eric. So you're going to want to attend, and we'll see you there. George Norrie's going to be speaking, Nassim Haramain, Robert Schock, Daniel Brinkley, Grant Cameron, Julia Mossberg, Teresa Yanaris, and another 50 speakers will be presenting at the 2019 Conscious Life Expo. Very simple to get tickets and a full conference schedule. Just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com, and you can also, very simply, click on the CLE banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't forget about Hoffman's Optics. Go and get your own night vision. We'll be talking about uh, UFO festivals and gatherings tonight with, with Mark Borchardt tonight. And when you go to these kinds of gatherings, you want to show up with your own night vision. That's what you want to do. So go and get yours. Hoffmansoptics.com. That's right. They build my goggles, right? The Jimmy Church model, the, uh, the deep blue model right there. You can go and get exactly what I use, right? So go Hoffmansoptics.com and uh, get a hold of Alec. He's a fade or not. He's great. And the banner is over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, I right. and while you're over at the website, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Click on the podcast banner. It's just two dollars a month, and you can also become a fade or not at our membership section on the site too, as well. And you can get everything like autograph shirts and hats, and downloadable commercial free MP3 files that you can play anywhere. You get that, and you get a private email to me. Don't know what you do with it, but you get that too. Just go to the membership section over at jimmychurchradio.com. Visit all of our sponsors. That's right. Life Change Tea, Ancient Life Oil, River Moon Coffee. Somebody sent me an email today, and I was going to read it, but it, it's so self-serving. <laughs> the email is like, dude, I drink your coffee, <laughs> right? Ancient Life Oil, I drink the tea, I've got the goggles, and it's just so cool. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, tomorrow night on the show, um, Fast Start Diet, and that's the reason why I'm slim and trim today, uh, Fast Start Diet. Tomorrow night on the show, we are going to be giving away three, not one, not two, but three. The number is three. Three Fast Start Diets tomorrow night on the show. Now, first off, you got to want to do the diet, right? But, um, and I'm going to figure out something clever for this giveaway. But these are amazing, okay? And, and you can go to Amazon.com and search for Fast Start Diet. You can go and check out everything that is in these gift packs that we are giving away tomorrow night. Massive three-day Fast Start Diet program. Everything in there. All right, so we're going to do that tomorrow night on the show. So I do want to thank Fast Art Diet and everybody over there for allowing uh, us to do this for the Fader Night. So that'll be tomorrow night during Fader Night on the show. All right, there you go. Um, today, check this out. December 5th, there, on, on today, nobody that influenced me was born on December 5th. <laughs> On this day in history, though, in 1945, it happened. It went down at 2.10 p.m. Five U.S. Navy Avenger torpedo bombers comprising Flight 19 take off from the Fort Lauderdale Naval Air Station in Florida on a routine three-hour training mission, right, three-hour tour. Flight 19 was scheduled to take Take them due east for about 120 miles, north for 73 miles, and then back for an overall final 120-mile leg that returns them to the naval base. They never came back. And that was on this day in 1945. I just watched, uh, we were talking about this last week in the show. I just watched Close Encounters, the third kind for the hundredth time. And that opening scene, right, with Flight 19, that's really cool. And there you go. And it happened on this day in 1945. Fader fact. Here you go. This is vetted. This is real. Fader fact. Hamsters 
run up to eight miles a night on the wheel in a habit trail. And that is your Vader fact. <laughs> uh, what happened to this show? What What happened? What happened? Do you guys remember those habit trails? They were fun to put together, too. Do they still make them? They still make them? They make those habit trails that'll pop up here on Twitter. Somebody posts me a picture. Oh, that's good. The number is three. Who did that? You are quick. That is fast. All right. All right. All right. I tweeted it just as you said it. You guys are good. That's pretty fast. All right. I want to see some pictures of habit trails. Tonight, very special guest, independent filmmaker Mark Borchardt is with us. We're going to discuss his new film, The Dundee Project, about the UFO Days, D-A-Z-E, by the way, Days Festival, which is up in Dundee, Wisconsin. Tomorrow night is another Fader Night. Teresa Yanaris is going to be here, Divine Frequency on the Airwaves, followed by Open Lines All Night Long, my favorite night of the week. I get to hang out with all of you and just talk. Now, I was just talking about the UFO Days Festival, and each year there are many festivals around the country. And sure, there are the big ones like Contact in the Desert. It's the one that everybody thinks about first because it is the biggest. And, of course, there's the Conscious Life Expo. You know, we're going to be there this year. It's also huge. But then there's the UFO Congress, the annual MUFON Symposium. You've got Roswell and their festival and the Ozark Mountain UFO Conference. All big and fun, full of history, certainly, right? I get that. But there's a lot of other conferences out there, and some of them are small, right? You know, little get-togethers, little gatherings. There's a lot of them. And attending all of them would be impossible. Rita and I decided to pull back. A few years ago, we did almost one per month. And we were getting invited to so many. We wanted to get out there and hang out with, the, with, with with all of you. And and they're so much fun. But it just got to be too much, right? It did. It, it it's, it's just something that, and when I talk about my schedule and our schedule here, it gets to be old news. But uh, now we really only do just four. We do Contact in the Desert. We do Disclosure Fest, Conscious Life Expo, and, of course, Soul Tech. And, I mean, there's a point... You have to look at things in this regard. There's 12 months out of the year, right? And each one of those months, I'm over at Coast to Coast uh, for one or two weekends. So that kills that. So that means we have one uh, or two weekends free per month. Four of those months are taken up with four other conferences, so that means there's like eight months there that are available. And then I've got taping and other things that I do for television. So that whacks out a bunch of weekends. And then when it, we stopped and looked at the schedule, really, I, I like to take a day off or two per month. You know, and it got to the point, especially a couple of years ago, where we went like 12 straight months without a day off. It was an insane... Just imagine if you worked 365 days a year, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours per day. You know, it, it got... we it, whew, Man, your mind starts to swim. So we had to back off of that. But one of the things that we did realize when, when we were hitting all of these conferences is there are a lot of great conferences out there. It's not just about these big ones over here on the West Coast. The ones over here on the West Coast are easy for us to get to. So, And I know it seems that way because we talk about contact or soul tech so much that everything is out here. But to be honest, that's just not the case. It's not. And if you look around, I get emails, you know, I get requests, phone calls. You know, you've all heard them. You know, Jimmy, you guys have to do stuff out here on the East Coast. Where are the East Coast conferences? Well, they're out there. They're all across the country. And if you just look around where you live, chances are you're going to find a local annual UFO gathering that has pretty much all the stuff of the big shows. You're going to have great people, an awesome hangout. You're going to have conversations, food, right, wine, uh, speakers, presentations, and you're probably going to have some great night watching, too. 
and you're going to be able to go and just hang out. Um, you know, when we go to something like ESETI or, you know, ESETI where there, you know, you've got 150 people there. You know, it's not 5,000, but it is as fun as anything. And so around you, you have a great, great gathering of people. Case in point, you know, the subject of our guest tonight, Mark Borchardt, and his new film, The Dundee Project, is the annual UFO gathering that's called UFO Days up in Dundee, Wisconsin. And here's the deal, if you think about it. Have you heard of UFO Days? Well, probably not. But if I lived in Wisconsin, I'd be there every year. I'm guaranteed. I would. And it's held up north, uh, on the north end of Long Lake in Dundee. And they have their own reasons for this event. And one of them is they've got craft that are visiting this small town. That's right. And their lake and Dundee Mountain, which is there, they've got their reasons to get together. And so if you're in the Chicago area, if you're in northern Illinois or, or Wisconsin, and you're around there, this is, this is an event that you should go and attend every single year. It's right there, right? Each week, I get invitations to events like this. And I know they are truly everywhere. They're everywhere. Every state, we get invitations all the time. And I'll go and I'll look and I just sit there and, man, I wish I had the time. I wish I could get out there and get to these because I know how fun they are and what you could do. I wish I had the the time to attend them all. But if you have an event in your area, this is what I want you to do. Post it up on Twitter. Post it up on Twitter. Post it in the sandbox. If you do, it'll get a retweet every single time. I, I promise you that. And if you attend an event, a, a, a local event in your area, post the pictures of it. Tell us the story. Get the word out. It's really cool. This is a community, everybody. It's a community. It's a family. And we're here to support in any way that we can. You know, and speaking of this community, uh, I did want to mention this really quick. I've gotten a lot of email about the Lazar film and, and my comments in the show and and uh, my review. Um most of it positive. I would say that nearly everybody agrees with what I have said, um, but it's it's kind of weird how it's generated uh, a little bit of dissension amongst the troops. And what I mean by that is is very simple. I've said it over and over. I've said it over for years, and not only years, but it just this past week. And it's either you believe Bob or you don't. That's it. <laughs> That's it. The film isn't going to change anything for you. And and that's it. That and and everybody out there that is pointing out everything on the Lazar side for or against whatever it may be, you're not going to change anybody's minds either. It's not going to happen. I mean, I can imagine someone saying something like, you know, man, you know, uh, you know, they, they go and they watch the film and they say, you know, I used to think Lazar was full of crap, man. But after watching this, I'm all in, you know, Viva Le Lazar. It ain't going to happen. Or the opposite of that, right? Like, I used to believe in Bob, man. But after watching the new film, um, I, I think he's made it all up. It's not going to happen. Neither, neither statement is going to come from you. It's not going to happen. Okay? So that's the film. Uh, the film ain't going to do it. No matter what the promises are or the belief or whatever you think, it's not going to change people's minds. It's not going to change yours. And you are not going to change somebody else's. And you're certainly not going to change mine. For the record. I do believe that Lazar made it to Area 51. I can't be any more clear than that. I've said that for years. I'm saying it now. That's my personal belief. I believe Lazar made it to Area 51. Now, what he did there, I don't know. 
<laughs> Neither do you. Right? I don't know. I don't. I've got his experiences, but I don't know. I don't. I hope that everything went down the way that he says it did. I do. But then there's the other part, which is this, you know, the MIT and the Caltech stuff. And that's not going to get answered until there are diplomas. At a very minimum, by the way. I'm not even sure d- diplomas would change people's minds. Or mine. But but that's it. That's it. Yeah, and, and the reason why I say that, and I want, again, I just want to be very, very clear here. Lazar made it to Area 51. Lazar probably worked at Los Alamos. What he did at Los Alamos, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen anything. But that's it. Okay? But when it comes to education, you can't take everyone at their word when it comes to this kind of stuff. Because if we all did, well, everyone would have gone to Yale, Harvard, MIT, Caltech. That's it. So that's why there are diplomas. Okay, so if you're going to say it, you back it up. That's it. No diploma, you didn't go. (laughs) That's all. So I wish he would just come clean about it. Maybe his memory's been messed with. I don't know what it is. But no diploma, he didn't go. I can't go into an employer and tell him I went to Caltech. And they say, where's your diploma? And I go, I don't have it. Well, (laughs) you know, and that's the truth. And that's, that's it. And there are certain standards that we need to hold ourselves all to. So with that, just watch the movie or not. (laughs) Right? That's it. Either way, it's not a life-changing event. All right? Think about that. Watch the film. Okay? Don't expect anything. Just don't. Just watch the film. You'll come out of the other side without a scratch, I promise. And just leave it at that. Okay? Don't expect to get your mind changed either way. That's not what this film is for. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, very special guest, independent filmmaker Mark Borchardt is here. We're going to discuss his new film, The Dundee Project, about the UFO Days Festival up in Dundee, Wisconsin. And then I want to remind everybody, tomorrow night is another Fader Night with Teresa Yanaris and Divine Frequency on the Airways, followed by open lines all night long. Tomorrow night, I am going to be giving away here, live on the program, three Fast Start Diets here tomorrow night. You're not going to want to miss that. Don't you want to get that body of Adonis? You know what I'm talking about. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. I'll be right back with our guest, Mark Borchardt. Stay with me. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you-know-who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. 
Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Teppy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, folks. It's a holiday season with hope in the air. Things to look forward to and no time for despair. Health can be a challenge, and so can the mail. So Get the Tea wants to help you by giving you a sale. Buy two months of Super Tea and get one month for free. No limit. That's buy two months of Super Tea and get one month free. That's a savings of 35 bucks. Where? GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Scroll down on the front page and find the Buy Two, Get One Free Add, click it and save. Orders over $100 get free shipping. Send the gift of life. Change tea at getthetea.com. We have many, many non GMO organic supplements just waiting for you. This holiday season, enjoy health and Thanksgiving with getthetea.com. Want to call us? 928 308 0408. That's 928 308 0408. Getthetea.com is a proud sponsor of doing what's right. That's getthetea.com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find Fast Start Diet on Amazon or go to FastStartDiet.com and use promo code TALK to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, Fast Start will include their number one rated LiPo3 appetite suppressant spray free with your order. This is Jimmy Church. And whatever your diet plans are, do what I did. Go to FastStartDiet.com. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthews. You're listening listening to Jimmy Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. Our meals, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Mark Borchardt is here. He is here. He's in the batter's box. Tomorrow night, Fader night. Open lines all night long. Teresa Yanaris is going to be here with Divine Frequency on the airwaves. And also, I want to remind everybody, Fast Art Diet, I'm going to be giving away three of those tomorrow night on the show. And we were at the premiere uh, for Bob Lazar on Monday night in downtown Los Angeles. And one of the cool things, I love hanging out with all the fan and all the friends and all of that, man. It's, it's just great. But to have all of you come up to me one after another and go, hey, church, man, you look pretty good. Well, <laughs> you know, it's not me. I didn't do it. Fast art diet. It really, I'm serious. And uh, that's that's it. There's nothing special special about it. That's it. That's how I did it. And we're going to give away uh, three of those tomorrow night on the show. Tonight, it's Mark Borchardt. He is a Milwaukee filmmaker, screenwriter, playwright. His latest film, The Dundee Project, which I watched today. And we've got all of the links up uh, for the film over on the website. We've got them up in Twitter, too, as well. Recently screened at Slamdance as well as uh, the opening night gala for the Wisconsin Film Festival as it continues a burgeoning run of festivals around the country. He's also had three of his recent plays produced and or read at Milwaukee's Village Playhouse and Samuel French right here in Los Angeles. His upcoming film projects include Transference and Acid Killer Chicks. 
That sounds like something I want to see. His latest film is called The Dundee Project, and it's about the UFO Days Festival up in Dundee, Wisconsin. And I would like to welcome for the first time right here to Fade to Black, Mark Borchardt. Mark, good evening. How are you? Hey, good evening, Jimmy. How am I? Well, I'm alive. I have my health, and that is a good thing. And, you know, you have your thoughts and your well-being, so you can't beat that with a stick. No, that's you're, you're exactly right on that. And before we get started, you get the first-time guest disclaimer, Mark. So let me get that out of the way so we can move on. And it goes like this. Mark, it's just you and I sitting on my couch having a conversation as friends. And where the conversation starts, it starts. Where it ends, it ends. But we're going to end as friends. There you go. You ready? Well, you're a poet, man. (laughs) You see, check this out. A couple things about you, uh, which I I really enjoy. One, you, you, you let us know that Chit chat is not part of your life, right? <laughs> right. So. That, that would be correct. Yeah, that that's sold. <laughs> right. There's that part, and then when you engage with people and your conversations start, you you continue with the chit chat. You enjoy engaging, but then there's the chit chat part that is not part of you. And it kind of pulls against each other. And then I want to add a third part to this, and then I want your answer. You have a fantastic radio show, man. You do. And it's Thank you. yeah, Cinema Fireside. And and I've listened to so much of it. And what I enjoy about the show is you turn on the microphone and you let her rip tater chip. And so for somebody that doesn't like chit-chat, you really like to talk. And you've got this knowledge that you share with everybody. So it's kind of a yin-yang thing going on. Now, I'm confronting you with this. What do you think about that? Well, it's reductive because I only do like about a 10-minute uh, monologue and then I'm exhausted. So I, I can't uh, play upon your um, ambitions in that respect. But then if there's something interesting to discuss that truly you know, enlivens the, uh, the spirit. I'm totally down. The, uh, the other thing that you do, and I really enjoy this is, and, and feel free to do this at any point tonight during the show is that you, when you engage, uh, with, uh, either fans or audience or the press or television, you know, you do, you will answer a question with a question. And, and that is something that is a pretty endearing quality, but it's interesting how you can get the reactions from the people that you are engaging with uh, in doing that. Is that some, do you do that just like in everyday life? Is, is that, or, or is that something that you just, uh, you know, save for the public? Um, you know, I think, again, like I say, I think there's a certain amount of empathy and intelligence. It's an admixture, I think, of those two essential elements. And, again, like I say, the the idea of small talk is a soul killer. So to elevate that uh, marginality into something potentially greater would be the mission in conversation, if that helps. And it, do you find that sometimes, because I totally understand what you're saying, and then there's the other part. I don't. What? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> and the, the other part of that is sometimes people just want to have that contact, and they don't know another way to go about it other than the chit-chat. And if you, right. and if you don't do that, you're going to break hearts. And you don't want to break hearts, do you? Uh, not one in particular, but, um, no, but anyway, uh, yeah, what I'm saying is, yeah, of course, if you, you, you engage people in a amicable fashion, but what I'm saying is you can't let it go on. And it's like drinking water. I mean, you can drink a glass of water at a time, but not 128 ounces. That's, that's going to kill you. <laughs> so it has to be within a reasonable modicum of, of reasonability. And with that, uh, everything that I just said is who you are. You you have stuck to yourself. You I, I I haven't seen you change over the years. You are you you are independent, fiercely independent, 
and you just depend on yourself. And I respect that uh, so much, but it's tough these days to make, uh, uh, to be independent and certainly an independent filmmaker. How do you manage to get it done? Well, first of all, it's not that independent, man. I've got a, uh, partner who's, who's a, a very, very strong and very, very, very supportive and so on and so forth. Second of all, uh, I mean, if you focus on what you're doing to a degree or whatever, you're going to get a, a certain amount of return from that focus, you know, and, you know, it's how do you spend, you know, the bulk of your day? You know, that's what comes into question. So, I mean, it's only hard if you make it hard and it's very, psychologically hard to get attuned to something that 98% of the people could care less about. So you have all of these exterior elements always pulling you away from your inner core. So you have that tension, that struggle on a, on a minute by minute basis, not minute by minute, but day by day, I should say. Sure. And there you know, is- because people, people go where the rivers run easiest, essentially. And when you, are doing your thing, you know, you have, you're out on your own, essentially, so. Well, and there's, there's something else here that uh, I want the audience really to be aware of, is that you don't waste, I should say, or spend or waste your time with needless things and you've expressed this a lot over the years uh, you know i'm talking about television or distractions and and stuff you uh are are writing constantly you're looking at yourself you're trying to improve your productions you're reading scripts is is that your hobby are you reading and studying other filmmakers and the art of film and constantly trying to prove yourself and not worried about you know the distractions that are around you yeah, I don't know if I have any hobbies. I don't think I have the time for that. That's been just by my nature. I I study every day. That's that's what I've done my entire life. I read every day. I write every day. Think critically every day, and that's just the way it's always been. So, yeah, there, there's no. I don't. I I don't. I don't know if any hobbies or anything. Yeah, it's, that just is not part of who I am. There was, shape or form. I, I think there's one hobby, and, and I'm going to ask you about this. I say, I don't even know. But a couple of times I heard you reference uh, music and instruments. And in fact, you called an interviewer one. You asked him if he was a bass player, right? <laughs> and I thought to myself, okay. you probably don't remember that, but I thought to myself, aha, Borchardt is a guitar player, he's a musician. Do you play? No, I'm not a musician because a, a musician is someone who would understand the functionality of, you know, of the narrative of chord families to a great extent and could play in public with confidence, make an income from it, so on and so forth. I do play the guitar. I do do music, but that's, that's for my, I, well, I did it for the Dundee project and we'll do it for uh, my upcoming films. But uh, no, I'm not a musician, but I do play. Okay, before, uh, one last question, and we'll get off the music subject. What kind of guitar do you have? Uh, the electrics and Ibanez, the acoustics are Alvarez's, and then I've got a three-quarter Oscar Schmidt, and uh, probably some other stuff here, too, so yeah. I knew it. Okay. Yeah, but those are, those are the main ones. And Ivan is electric and Alvarez is on the acoustic. Yeah, right on, man. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, we'll get off of that. Um, a couple of quick questions. These are just for me. Um, I was listening. And your audience. And, and, well, see, that's the thing. It's just you and I sitting on my couch. Wherever, yeah, okay. <laughs> right? So, but th- this is for me. I'm, I'm a big film guy. I, I Well, I like to think that I study and and I enjoy, but I have my favorites. Um, and for you, um, do you have a director that has guided you where you went? You know what he frames right. This 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 guy, he's got the right editing. I like what he's doing. Was there a director that influenced you? Well, I, I have to. I, I what I do is original. I just I just I really am not into that. I yeah. I just don't. 
I'm not into that copycat thing. I've, I've just never did that with my writing, with my filming, with music or anything. I just, I just don't do that. But uh, the filmmakers that I do admire, the essential ones are uh, Wells and Bergman. They're like right at the top of, list, of, of the list. And then there's uh, Herzog and Fassbinder, Dreyer and Tony Ani, Romare. Um, I mean, it just goes on and on. So... Yeah, at those, but yeah, Bergman and Wells and Herzog and that definitely are at the top of the list. When you do, you do you pay attention or go to any of the big budget films, or is that something that you're, isn't important to you? No, what's what's important to me is to go to 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 go to films and receive knowledge and inspiration. That last night I was blessed with the thirty five millimeter print device wide shut, uh, a beautiful big screen, um, uh, screening of I am Cuba. I'd seen that before, but never on the big screen from 64 right. memories of under development from 68. These are those, just those three recent films mean so much to me. I am Cuba memories of under development and eyes wide shut, just stunning impact on my psyche. Wow, and to see to see eyes wide shut, thirty five millimeter, um, that that must have been pretty cool. Do you think? Okay, and then we'll get off of eyes wide shut. But I've seen. No, no, we should indulge eyes I, wide shut. I see. Shut. I, I'm so with you on that. I'm so with you. Do you? Then be with me. Okay, okay. Let's let's join hips. Do you think that the film was completed? You know, that, that's ridiculous because uh, it's like talking about the Magnificent Ambersons, you know, how it was it chopped and chopped and chopped, you know, Wells' um, uh, second film. And here's the thing. He never topped out on Magnificent Ambersons. He was called to South America by the U.S. government uh, for public relations to film down there, so he never abandoned the project. And they said, well, if Wells would have would have cut it, it would have been great. Well, no, it wouldn't have been great because if you look at a lot of the footage, it's just not that good. So it's like you don't even want more. So it, the Magnificent Ambersons is a wash. Eyes Wide Shut, I think he basically had the film done, and it's in his style. So there, there's nothing that's going to contribute to it in any editorial form that's going to make it any better. Eyes Wide Shut is complete. Now, I agree with the editing, okay? And and when I hear those critics say that, that Stanley would have well, taken... what are they it, saying? What are they well, saying? You know, that, that the edits weren't quite fine-tuned as as he would have wanted in the final. And and I, I disagree with that. But I do agree with them with the the composition of the soundtrack and some of the audio wasn't up to the standards of, of everything that he had done prior. No, that that that's completely ridiculous. I, I I've seen. I know he's got th only thirteen films. I've seen them all, and there's there's nothing more or less about that 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 soundtrack's immaculate. I mean, unless somebody could make specific provable comparisons, there's just, there's just no way that makes sense. See, and that's what I enjoy about you, Mark. You're going to stick to it. I uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, because you guess what? The Emperor has no clothes. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? Is it a film? Yeah, there's a there's a documentary out. Okay, uh, that's a, that's a whole that's a Russell Brand uh, uh, documentary that okay. came out a couple of years ago. Um, now, uh, getting back to uh, what is happening today, when it comes to the the modern parts of cinema, it seems like, and this is my little segue into the UFO subject, it seems that Hollywood now. Um, has morphed into this. If if you want a film project green lighted, if you want the budget and you want the ticket sales, you make an alien invasion movie, right? You do. It seems like a few come out every single week, and they're in constant production out here. What do, what do you think is is going on with that? Where Hollywood has no issues with cranking these these alien invasion films? I mean, one after another. Well, you must be privy to a lot of alien invasion films, because I, I haven't heard of any. But uh, 
Well, obviously, out there, it's it's to make these films with um, based upon short term, high interest loans that they need to pay back pretty quickly to the bank, and so whatever is going to ex- create collective hysteria in the ticket buying audience, that's what they have to go for. You know, it's. It's a, it's an economic gamble with a lot of people's money uh, with those films out there. Yeah, and it I, it feels to me sometimes, Mark, that there seems to be some kind of underlying message here. We all know that we're not alone in this universe, right? And and we know that, but it seems like they're trying to acclimate humanity. Right? It's like they're trying to get some kind of strange message across so that if something crazy... Hollywood or the alien. Right? Or both, right? <laughs> or both. Correct. So when it does happen, it's it, we're not going to react in a crazy way. We're just going to know that this was inevitable. Okay, well, yeah, I think that we become... Uh, culturated to new things pretty quickly. That that's in our instinctual nature. So I mean, you're you're trying to tell me that Los Angeles is trying to prepare us to meet aliens. Is, is that what you're hinting at? I'm I'm strongly suggesting that. Yes. What 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 would a Hollywood or an executive in Los Angeles trying to make his mortgage have any interest? in Joe Blow being acclimated to aliens. See, and that's a great question, and that's why you're on this show, because I knew you were going to do this. I'll tell you, one simple answer. The CIA's Office of Entertainment, and you can go uh, you can go to the CIA's website, and you can look it up, and you can see their agenda and how they work closely with Hollywood to make sure that their message is delivered. And it's right there. As a matter of fact, they're hiring, right? You can go there right now and apply for a job. And Well, I've, I've, there's probably a pretty good pension involved with that. I, there probably is, you know? And there, there has been many examples, Mark, over the years of the CIA getting scripts in advance, altering those scripts, sending them back to Hollywood, and that's what made it to the final cut. Uh, I'm speechless, but yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not in the CIA offices and I'm not in the <laughs> Los Angeles offices of production company. So I wouldn't know, but it sounds pretty abstract, but you know, maybe that's the spice of life altogether. Who knows? Now the, uh, like I said, this is my segue. When we come to okay. uh, something like the Dundee project, and I think most that would watch this film, would assume a couple of things. And the first thing is you just went out there and shot this and and came back. But this, this was a few years in the making. This wasn't something that was just decided on a whim. Was it? Uh, it was decided on a whim. Uh, I went out there and like I say, I, I, I can't engage in small talk after five minutes. I start to go bonkers beautiful country up there so i brought my camera equipment and you know hey how you doing you know oh yeah you gotta you know this and that i'm, I'm saying oh okay and then i just take the tripod start filming the beautiful maybe grass in the sunlight the water the rippling sparkling water and so that's what i just did it on a whim and uh throughout the years found these interesting people who had a great presence on camera and started interviewing them and talking with them. And that's how it came about on a whim. Did you, what, what made you aware of UFO days? Did you have an interest in ufology before that? Well, there's two parts to that. The, the, The specific way that I found out about that when I did waste some of my God given precious time here on earth, Occasionally, in front of a television screen, going through all that garbage, I they came across a I came across a channel that all of a sudden was talking about some UFO event, and it happened to be in Wisconsin, in Dundee. I said, "Oh my gosh, man! It's 
right where I lived, you know, up the way. And that's how I became aware of it. And, and that's, yeah. Yeah, no, you go ahead. I'm sorry. And then part two, yeah, I grew up in the 70s where there was a an, ex- an embellished interest in the occult. Leonard Nimoy with his great um, show, obviously. And then UFOs, Bigfoot, the Bermuda Triangle, the Loch Ness Monster, those four things were in the collective mentality, in the zeitgeist at that point in America in the 70s. So I you know, that, that culture surrounded you of interest. And how far is Dundee from Milwaukee? It's about, it's about an hour. It's about an hour drive. Go up north. And were, were you surprised to find out, uh, when you got there that Dundee, it's, it's not a UFO festival that was put together because some people had interest in UFOs. They got together because they are getting visited, right? (laughs) They've got crafts that are coming down to the lake, to the mountain. They're hanging out, flying over, you know, and and that's what is going on there right in the middle of Wisconsin. Right. I mean, yeah, there are some individuals who believe that that, that's what's going on, that it's this uh, centrific location, and, you know, they they believe they're aliens and go visiting ships so on and so forth, and, you know, that's their prerogative, whatever their men- mental state is that brings them to that perception. God bless them. But, yeah. And how many trips have you made uh, each year? Uh, how many times have you been back to UFO days? Oh, when I was going, I went maybe, I don't even know, maybe eight, nine, ten times. And it's it's once a year. It's like in July. Correct. they Third Saturday in July. How but many? I, I haven't gone for a while because of my mentality. I just, just all of a sudden, I just something doesn't exist for me anymore. So that that had its time, and it's that time is documented in that film. Now, so if I decided to go out uh, uh, to UFO days next summer, would you go with me? It's possible. I don't know exactly what my mentality would be. So I mean, some so. <laughs> Some dudes asking me to go out to Iowa on Saturday. I said, well, there must, there's got to be a lot of money uh, involved to book out to Iowa on a whim on Saturday. Now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it, the uh, we've got to take a break right here. But when you go, obviously, if you went eight or nine times, uh, you make friends, right? And is UFO Bob uh, still around? I don't know. He may, from what I understand, he may have went to heaven. God bless his soul. I don't want to say for sure, mm-hmm. but that's that would be my understanding. And I don't know if you you do make friends, but you make more acquaintances than friends. Friends are someone who more or less on a regular basis walks the same path as you do. Acquaintances, you know, are I hit and miss. But I know we have to do a break. Yeah, he was uh, quite the character, and so when we come back, uh, we'll discuss uh, UFO Bob a little bit and everything else that is involved with this with this film, and we watched it today a few times, and the links are up over at jimmychurchradio.com and certainly right there in Twitter. This is Fade to Black, our guest tonight, Mark Borchardt, filmmaker, director, playwright, all of that. We'll be right back after this short break. More with Mark Borchardt right after this. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Come join us for the 2019 Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles at the LAX Hilton. This year, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Chariots of the Gods with Eric Von Daniken, and I'll be hosting the panel with Eric, Linda Moulton Howe, Jason Martell, Billy Carson, and David Wilcock. 
Join George Nori, Nassim Haramain, Robert Schock, Damian Brinkley, Grant Cameron, Julia Mossbridge, Teresa Yanaris, and another 50 speakers who will be presenting at the 2019 Conscious Life Expo. Just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and a full conference schedule or click on the CLE banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Folks, this is very important information. What's to be said about CBD? AncientLifeOil.com. Our CBD is made from hemp and has 0.003 THC, which means this wonderful product won't get you high. No matter what amount you take, what does CBD do for the body? My hands are tied. But you can Google CBD benefits and be astounded. When you're finished reading, you'll want to log on to AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com and purchase. Life is good when you feel good. People are tired of pain. People are asking for non-GMO organic products to help them with, (laughs) you fill in the blank. Legal in 49 states, and again, our CBD is made from hemp. Ancient Life Oil is about helping people one by one by one. If you wonder how good the product is, the CEO takes it every day without miss. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Have a great day. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're of the Honey Brothers. <laughs> we are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. Reclaim your active lifestyle with Angioprim. Angioprim is the original liquid oral chelation supplement. Chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in your veins and arteries that can cause blockages. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. Find out more. Go to angioprim.com. Talk to a trained consultant by calling Angioprim toll-free, 877-882-7221. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hey, it's Grace. Can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger, you know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the lucky pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. <laughs> Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. Bespoke Radio for the masses on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. Tonight, Mark Borchardt is here. Filmmaker, screenwriter, playwright, 
Talking about his latest project, it is called the Dundee Project. It's about the UFO Days Festival up in Dundee, Wisconsin. And it's on the it's on the north side of Long Lake. And that's where this uh, uh, festival takes place. And before we get back to that, Mark, uh, and, and UFO Bob, who is just is about as cinematic as it gets. But before we get back to UFO Bob... Did you have a general interest in UFOs or even uh, a step past that? Do you think that we are all there is or that the, the universe is teeming with life? Um, I have an interest in many things, life, walking, reading, writing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, don't, I don't really think about uh, UFOs, but I will say that... Uh, that of course there's millions and millions and millions of other life forms out there. I mean, that's scientifically just the way it is. It's not what I think it's, you know, it's like, do I think the sun is, you know, shining out there somewhere? Well, it, it's not, it's regardless of what I think it, it, the sun's out there, regardless of what I think there's millions of uh, variants of life forms out there for sure. It, it has to be that way, right? So you have, uh, an open mind to this, and you're drawn to this uh, uh, gathering for whatever those reasons are, but you're drawn to it. And what were your expectations in getting there? Uh, what What did you think you were going to experience? I probably didn't think. I probably just enjoyed the uh, driving up there and the beautiful scenery. And I'm sure it was probably a sunny day. It usually is at that time of year in the, the middle of summer. So I probably wasn't thinking about that. I was just looking at the beautiful grass, the blue sky, the green grass, um, all the sights along the way. And then when I arrived, I began to absorb what was going on. And uh, it was, I think it was just, it was very mystical and very dreamlike because, you know, I live in the city right in the middle of the middle of the city and to go into the hinterlands where there's other people you've never seen before, another place you haven't encountered as of yet, it's all very wondrous to uh, take in for the first time, for sure. And, you know, everybody's got those uh, preconceived notions about these UFO conferences, right? The tinfoil hats and the crazies walking around and and uh, uns. Stable. That about sums it up. Yeah, right? Exactly. So is that what you encountered? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I encountered a uh, heightened level of fun and engagement and enthusiasm. And, yeah, you, you're right. There's people walking around with uh, tin, foil, tin foil on their heads. That would be absolutely correct. And were you okay? <laughs> It's so funny to hear you say it like that. Were you okay with that, though? In that, with those, uh, when you get to a conference like that, you are around people that uh, are okay with no matter the craziest thing you could say, you're not going to phase somebody, right? There's nothing that you could say to UFO Bob that is going to surprise him you know what i mean because everybody is is so open-minded and accepting because they are there for very personal reasons that uh that for some are are pretty strange right and if you're there for very personal reasons that you're probably pretty narrow-minded because you have this very specific vantage point this very uh singular perspective that you're going to engage in so those people are not open-minded uh, like that in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. They have their own particular agenda, and you, you know, and uh, you just become subservient to that agenda, and you're not there to be a contrarian. So, yeah, well, that's exactly you let the them point. roll. Right, right, and the uh, the conversations usually, and I'm interested about this uh, for you uh, going to something like this for the first time is when somebody comes up to you, they usually want to talk about their contact experiences. And they're going to mm -hmm. ask you about yours, right? Mm -hmm. Did you have an experience to share with them? It wasn't about UFOs. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's like, 
you know, people, they're going to do the talking and you're going to do the listening. That's, that's going to be basically, that's going to be base, ba- the basic strategy of the day. So, and, you know, I, I know what I know, so I don't need to hear myself talk. I don't know what they know, so I'll listen to them. And what was, uh, there's, you've been up there many times, but Correct. Uh, what was the one experience, the, the film is a short film, everyone, so, and he's, you know, Mark spent a lot of time up there. Um, what was something that you can share with us that even you went, okay, that's pretty nuts? Um, I, I know, I think it actually was like the first time I was up there, okay, something there was an incident. It was, it got on national TV on something like that about the UFO sighting. It actually made the papers and so forth. And I remember we were all of a sudden in a caravan of cars at the end of the show or end of the night show night, whatever, so to speak. And I, I don't know how we did it in the dark, but somebody was like leading this caravan of cars to track down the UFO. And it was, there was something, you know, like I said, the national news and all of that stuff. And I don't know how we did it. I think we got to some end of some field or in some field or something and found these, um, these, uh, what are those Chinese floating Chinese lanterns or something like that? You know, it was, that was pretty incredible. I don't, I don't know how in the dark, driving in car if they actually found where these things landed but yeah i i think we did so yeah that that was a pretty i think it was a, that was the first time i was out there it was tied to the newspaper sightings and we find these flying roman candle balloons or something like that is it was a pretty incredible way to to kick that off i think that may have been the very first time being up there that was that was bizarre tell us about ufo bob um the yeah, just tell us about him. He he he's he's pretty. I, I can't think of another word except for cinematic. But how did you yeah, find he, him? Uh, well, it's a small area that you're dealing with the bar and the landing and so on and so forth. And somebody probably said, "Hey, there's you a full Bob. You should go interview him." I mean, you could see that dynamic, that simple dy- dynamic play out, and that's probably how it happened. And you know, I asked him then to be on camera and, you know, he's a cantankerous and so you have to, you know, go with his flow and yeah, he is the galvanizing force of the UFO days. He is, he is the nexus of the nonological. So uh, he is that, that galvanizing power that people, um, uh, you know, adhere themselves to. And I remember one time, uh, uh, a trail of drunkards following him like he was spewing the gospel and he's drunk tripping over themselves trying to keep up, up with him and I think he's waving around a flashlight it was yeah, it was it was pretty pretty uh, fun I would have to say at the, at the UFO pilot at one of those points for sure as a, as a filmmaker how cool is it to be able to get a personality like that in front of the camera Oh yeah, it, it's pretty cool because you know it when you got it, and you just know that that footage is going to be gold. So it's it's a, it's a great moment when you you know you've locked into something like that. And yeah, because as a as a filmmaker, you know that's your goal. But does it also take the pressure off? Right, you're not going to have to push this. You're not going to maybe not even have to direct. Right, all you have to do. Is is make sure you capture it. Is that is that where you're coming from? Yeah, exactly. Like I say, I mean, it, it just what he has to say just plays out. Oh man, we just lost Mark. Okay, wow, that was bizarre. Let's uh, let's get him straight back on. That just went straight click gone. Did we lose? No, we did not. Okay, let's see what's happening here. That was bizarre. Live on the air, it just went blank screen. 
Okay, uh, let's see here. Lord, what happened? But that was you, man. <laughs> was it for real? I don't know how that happened. See, that's um, that. You, maybe we're talking. Maybe we're talking too much about UFOs, man, and something's going down. That's what I'm talking about. See, I told you the CIA, man, the NSA. Well, and you well, right. well, see, now you, you made, brought it on, man. Maybe no, you made his film about UFOs. Now they're. <laughs> Right now, now they're we're on to you. Blame. Yeah, now they're on to you. Okay, so back right. to the uh, you know the the coolness of being able to shoot a personality like UFO Bob. The question was uh, for you: does it uh, does it take the pressure off? Yeah, well, there is no pressure because I'm not under the subservience of anybody or anything to do anything and provide anything. I'm doing this thematically on my own, and you know, I just. You just. Oh, no. Okay. That's bizarre stuff going on. Let's see. Okay. Now that's, that's never happened. Okay. Hold on for a second here. Now that's. Yeah. That's, we're here. That's never happened two times in a row. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's cool. Um, how much footage, uh, did you shoot? How much is left? Is there going to be a Dundee part two? Yeah, you know, that's actually interesting because, you know, it's a short film, and ultimately I was thinking about a far more introspective piece of work that would go beyond maybe the parameters of Dundee itself and offer a broader range of uh, temporal retrospection, you know, in, in time to look back at it and how that, what kind of an, an immersive experience it was and how that played out into uh, the further life beyond that. So as in that, there is the potentiality of, of something like that occurring in, in a, an additional film. Maybe yeah, I wouldn't uh, discount that with, uh, with all of these conferences and I attend a lot of them. I speak at a lot of them. And one of the things that I enjoy most Mark is going out at night, uh, which you did too, and with night vision and everybody's got their video cameras and we sit out there in chairs and stare at the sky. Always something goes down. I've, I've had either hundreds of sightings or I've had 10, but certainly I've never had nothing happen. Uh, what did anything occur when you were out there? Yeah. Um, again, like I say that, well, there was the first incident, uh, by, like I said, nationally reported UFOs out there finding that stuff. Now, yeah, you do see lights and so on and so forth. And, you know, what what can you say? Um, I don't mean to be abstract about it, but, uh, you know, some would, oh, man, I saw lights. And then you could respond and say, well, what do you think they were? You know, so, yeah, you many times out there, the lights do arrive on time around, I don't know if it's 9, 45, 10, 15, something like that. So, mm -hmm. And how did, how did that change you? Was it, in an, uh, was it an epiphany type of situation? What, seeing Roman candles in the air? Not, not the Roman candles, but uh, other things that were not Roman candles. I mean, high up in the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, the other things were the people getting intoxicated, seeing that they visit alien ships and so forth. Like that. It seems like a lot of them, you know, uh, would find alliance with alcohol. Not all, certainly, but uh, a lot of there's a lot of drinking there. I'll put it to you that way. At the, at the at, at UFO days, uh, most that of the would, that would be correct. Yeah, uh, most of the conferences that I go to, it's the opposite of that. Right? right, like up at East Eddy Ranch in Washington, which is one of the craziest places. If you're ever going to go as a filmmaker and you want to go shoot some crazy stuff, you go up to East Eddy Ranch. There is no alcohol or any drugs allowed of any kind on the ranch. So everybody is stone cold sober. And that's, that's interesting. And I did notice, uh, and you've mentioned this a few times, uh, about... Uh, the party atmosphere that was going on at UFO days. Um, Correct. Yeah. It, if you go to uh, something like E. SETI, 
where you're going to have a couple of hundred night watching uh, people out there with their gear and everything staring at them. There is no alcohol, right? There, that doesn't mm-hmm. exist. And that was something else I wanted to ask you about really quick. You, uh, uh, you, fi- I find you saying over and over again, I don't do drugs. I don't do, I, I don't drink. I, I don't do, you know, I don't do, I don't do. Why, why do right. you, why do you feel that you have to say that so often? Is it you, the way people may perceive oh, no, no, you no, no. or no, your appearance? I, I, actually, I don't. I think what you're referring to and it makes me cringe is when that was edited they brought that into the editing. And obviously when we go about our daily business and we encounter people and this, like when we do Q, when I was doing Q and A's, right. So one would be juxtaposed against the other in a sense for effect. So I don't really say that, but when, you know, if we, if I say, Hey, good morning, the 10 different people a morning and somebody edits thousands of those good mornings together. It's like, Whoa. So it's the same thing. It's just, uh, it's an act of artifice for effect. So, so <laughs> you don't feel that you have to say it. it it's, it's funny be, because you don't, it's just that this has all been jumbled together and it looks like you're repeating it. Right. Yeah. And when I saw it, it made me cringe when I was catching out to that. It was, it was definitely cringeworthy, but again, I think that entertainment is, is an act of naivety on the audience's part that they believe all of this stuff, and it's a lot of people seek entertainment. A few uh, seek intellectually stimulating things. So I mean, you know, unless you're naive, you understand it's an act of montage for a for a, for a simplistic effect. You know, are are you um, you know people really are drawn to uh, not only uh, your personality and your filmmaking, but and and your intelligence, but you have a way of engaging that has uh, a, a serious amount of humor attached to it, whether it's intentional or not. It's it's something that's very 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 cool. And your engagement back, uh, are you conscious of that? Do you, do you realize that you are a pretty fun and entertaining person to be around? Does that even enter into your mind? Well, of course, it's all premeditated. I mean, I'm very consciously aware of it. It's like a show, and what it is is more of a getting into a empathetic region, because if you become too deep or intellectual or too meaningful about something. It, it's just not for everyone. So in order to smooth things out and to briefly engage with people for a short period of time, that all of that premeditated show will come out a little bit and that just kind of moves things along. So well, and, and- yeah, it's all highly, uh, highly aware of it while it's going on. You said to me, I'm going to throw you under the bus a little bit. You had said to me earlier today, I hope you don't mind. uh, I said, you know, uh, you said, okay, so how long do you want to do this? I said, we're going to do this for two hours. And your response was, and it was, it was talk about gold. You go, Jimmy, it's a 17 minute film. How long can we, right? I was like, but that's exactly the point. You know, and and for you, I, you know, I, I want to come back at you one more time. You have so much to say, and we learned so much from you, and and I hope that you appreciate that. There is so much that we can cover, and 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 we are going to run out of time tonight. But I, I think that's one of your your amazing things uh, is uh, is your intelligence when it comes to what it takes to make a film what it takes to be committed to it. It's not something that is easy, and I've dedicated my life to this. And you need to share that knowledge with everybody else. And I think we're we're here to, to, to listen. Yeah, well, first of all, this is probably one of the most painless interviews I've ever done. I really appreciate you. I mean, it... It, if if this was you were a different personality, this would be a disaster, and I couldn't endure it. But you're you are a, 
uh, skilled conversationalist. So it's not really me doing the talking. It's actually you having the ability to keep this going on in an engaging way. And you, uh, you said uh, it was really funny. I don't know if it was Slam Fest or if it was uh, found footage, but one of the festivals you had said, uh, wh- which festival is Colin? Colin, as in the name of a person. Yeah, the 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 guy that. Oh was, yeah, yeah, that would be that'd be down in Chicago. Okay, that was in Chicago. So you said to Colin, you go look, man, or you said to the audience, you said, I don't. I don't enjoy going out to dinner and engaging in conversation. And you turned to Colin and said, but Colin, we're going to go have fun tonight. Don't worry about it. And, and, and I'm going to throw that back at you. If you and I went out to dinner, just like this show, we could sit for a couple of hours and, and have a great conversation. Yeah, of course. I guess just as we are now, case in point. Right. So, yeah, what I meant, what I meant, what I, I guess everything needs to be clarified because things are brought down to such a reductive level. It true life is the experience of nuance. So I guess when I say that, I I love going out to dinner with intelligent, respectful people. I'm I'm saying just people who have just bring you down and so forth that I wouldn't want to engage in, but. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if, yeah, people who just go out to eat for the sake of going out to eat and nothing's happening, yeah, that's pretty horrifying because you're you're trapped with them for about like an hour. But when it's actually uh, with engaging people, it's, it's going out to dinner is great. So yeah, that's exactly sure. right. That's exactly right. And we're gonna take a break right here. And when we come back, I'm, I want to talk actually about the festival circuit. And, and what is going on, uh, not only with what happens on the circuits, but the reception of uh, the Dundee project. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. And uh, we'll pick up everything where we are leaving off right now. This is Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, filmmaker, screenwriter, playwright, Mark Borchardt. I'm your Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. here we listen to jimmy church you're listening to fade to black always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk jimmy church with fade to black kgra radio.com Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. 
You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. If you have hard water, the lime scale not only leaves white spots, it clogs pipes and breaks down appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars in energy and wear. Eliminate lime scale and other water issues like brown staining and bad odors with HydroCare water products available from Wave Home Solutions. Wave's affordable water systems don't use salts or chemicals. You'll love the way your water tastes, smells, and looks. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Mark Borchardt, filmmaker, screenwriter, playwright. His new film, his new project is called The Dundee Project. It's about the UFO Days Festival in Dundee, Wisconsin. Tomorrow night is Fader Night. It's open lines all night long. Teresa Yanaris is going to be here with Divine Frequency on the Airwaves. Then we open up those phones and start the conversation. So that is tomorrow night. And this weekend, I'll be over at uh, Coast to Coast AM. There you go. And then I'll see everybody on Wednesday when we start this thing all over again. Now, Mark, um, I want to talk about uh, the the film festival circuit. And what I find uh, a little strange, which is different than everything else. In other words, there's not like an art circuit where you're an artist and you have a painting and you take it out on the art circuit and then you get up and answer questions about your painting right <laughs> or, or music or, or or anything like that but the film circuit that's exactly what goes on and i feel if it was me you're you're completely exposed you know and you've got your your work up there and and your heart and your soul and your sweat and then you've got to turn around and, and possibly face the critique of it, and you've got to answer questions. What's that like? Well, I'll tell you. And first, uh, I, I, in reflecting on our conversation, you know, uh, you know, when you talk about like being doing all the stuff on your own, that's incredibly not true because I have the wonderful Max Hay as an assistant editor with the Dundee Project, and Andrew Swant is the producer, and Nick Coor and Joe Pickett from. Uh, Found Footage Festival, they're the executive producers. Right. So on the, the post-production side, you had uh, those four gentlemen really come through and really get the job done. Well, that, that, so I, have to, I, I have to say that. You know? Right, and I've got, right, right. You know, my partner, Lila Wilson, who's, who's you know, through thick and thin, is, is, you know, is always, you know, a very strong fortress of empowerment. So that you got to put in those factors definitely and T.W. Hansen for that matter as well you know and Tom Pankowski these are people behind the scenes that uh, you know fill in a lot of voids man and keep pushing this thing uh, you know where it needs to go yeah and you need that support you've, you you're you need that team and you've got to have those those little pieces where you have those experts that know exactly you know what to do to get things done and that's how these projects come to life Exactly. 
Now, as for the festival circuit, if your film is in a festival, it's most likely worthy to be there. So the audience reaction is always kind, you know, and people are enthusiastic. They want to see, they want to talk to you. They want to see your film, all of that stuff. So there, there's, I mean, you know when your work plays or not. So it's, it's not like something unexpected is going to happen. So you're at a film festival because people want to engage with your work. So it's kind of like, you know, you're in the know at that point. And how has the reception been for the Dundee project? It's been extraordinary. People have really dug the film. There's a real energy while a palpable energy while watching it. And uh, they really have an enjoyable time. When uh, I had mentioned earlier, you know, here in Hollywood, it seems like if you're a screenwriter or you're a director or whatever, you want something green light, you know, do an alien pick, you know, <laughs> bring that to your pitch meeting and you, you've got a pretty good chance of getting a, a project done. And you, and I go and say something like that, your newest project is about the UFO Days Festival. Uh, do you think that that uh, had... S- uh, it has that appeal for the audience, you know, that they are attached to it and they understand it. And this is something that they can get into. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's again, like a uh, foreshadowing of good times to come. When you do talk about UFOs or aliens, there are these kind of like built in expectations that uh, reasonably are fulfilled by this film. Does that make you, are you suddenly a UFO expert? You know what I mean? Are, are they hitting you with UFO no. questions? <laughs> They're, are they expecting you, you to are. Be, Right, exactly. See? Right? So are they expecting that from you to have this vast UFO knowledge? Uh, not, in, not in particular, uh, you know. If they want to think that, more power to them. I'm only going to answer what I'm going to answer, so it, it means zero to me, you know. If, you know, so I just, you know, you, you tell it like it is, and you get your answer. No, yeah, yeah, no, I totally get that. I guess what I am suggesting here is if you come out with a film like this, now you are going to get those questions from people that have a UFO background or an interest in it, and they are assuming that you're going to know what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's not really hard. I mean, I mean, what what would they know that is so specific that it's that it's mind blowing and so forth? I mean, you you know, they may know this. I mean, most people don't. I, I don't think I've ever encountered someone who was head over heels of, on the subject and tried to beleaguer me with all of this knowledge and and test mine, you know, I'll engage, you know, with whoever, however form is, is necessary. So, I mean, it doesn't put me off or anything in any way, shape, or form. It's all in good fun as long as nobody puts out an eye. Right, right. Well, I'll give you an example. Um, has anybody asked you about Roswell? Uh, not to my knowledge. I mean, yeah, I understand that there are, Initially, there was talk of a weather, or it was reported by the government that a weather balloon went down, and then, I mean, I, I'm reading Andy Jacobson's Area 51, or, uh, great. Oh, yeah, I mean, that would probably be the Bible on the subject. Yeah, great book, great book. She's very smart. She's been on the show a few times. Uh, she's absolutely amazing. You're in the right direction there. Uh, right. Andy Jacobson is uh, very well-researched. Um, and the, the other part of this, and this is kind of where I'm going, is that there is a word called disclosure. We all know the word mm-hmm. and we all know what the definition is, but it means different things to different people. But right now in the UFO community specifically, Mark, there has been a lot of craziness when it comes to the possibility of disclosure you know the moment where the president like independence day or whatever steps up to the podium on live television and says we we are not alone right (laughs) okay the questions have been answered well that's disclosure to a lot of people in the ufo community and and this year well it started in december of last year lots of coverage with the new york times and cnn and the pentagon and 
and their secret UFO program and these videos that have been released. And it feels like there's something going on, like there could be an announcement for you outside of the UFO community. Are you aware of this? Are you aware of the disclosure movement? Well, I am now. I mean, I'm sure that's something that's been, you know, simmering and may come to a reasonable boil and then may simmer again and so on and so forth. So, I mean, I think these questions kind of like, like there's 8 billion of us and we kind of want to ask the next person, you know, and kind of find out if we can get them on their frequency and so forth. And I think that's why these questions are asked. Do you, do you think that the world will freak out? Right. Where the, no, no you, you no. don't, if, if uh, if it happened, some crazy event, right? Some crazy Independence yeah. Day. Yeah. You... Uh, I mean, what being being attacked by flying saucers? No, no, no. Well, that would freak some people out. That would freak. Yeah, that me would. Out. That, that would. Yeah, that would. There, there would. You, there, you'd have your freak out. <laughs> you would have a freak out. But if 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 uh, what is the freeway that goes between Chicago and Milwaukee? What is that? Ninety five. What? Yeah, it's like it's ninety four. Ninety four. Okay, so yeah, well, forty three, ninety four. However, it's termed forty one, forty three, ninety four. Okay, so ninety four, a big ship comes and lands on the ninety four and blocks traffic in both directions, right? And is just sitting there. D do the people of Milwaukee lose their minds, or do they just go, you know what, move that, move that thing off the freeway? I've got to get to work. Well. The classic answer is a little bit of both. But, yeah, I'm sure that their worlds would be rocked to a great extent because this is something that people have considered since the first ebb and flow of their own consciousness in life, you know, that, that you know, this is their introduced ideas such as that, that there are other uh, tangible life forms other than themselves, and if confronted with that, finally, empirically, you know, hands-on, they'd be like, wow, yeah, this is crazy, man. This is revolutionary. And what about religion? Does that come into what, play? What about it? Does religion freak out, too, as well? Or do they, uh, you know, does... does no, the no, no, no. They always have an answer for everything. See, the thing of it is, is that you got to stick to your own beliefs. They'll, they'll, they'll come up with an answer for anything. So that it, their response would be immaterial. In that... <laughs> I'm curious about that. Whatever their response would be, uh, what do you think it uh, an immaterial response? What do you think it would be? Well, again, anything. I, well, everyone would have a different react. They 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 would incorporate it, such as I told you. So this is what we said all along, and it's like, huh? You know. So it'd be like that's what it would be like. You know. It's like I said that they're their reaction is highly immaterial in the, in the real world. So they, 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 both, they'd be saying, we, we told you all along and then you'd be like, man, you, you never told us nothing, but you know, it's so, yeah, if, if you never buy into something, you're never going to get burned. You know what I'm saying? You always stay apart from everything except your own life and your own convictions. And then you're going to do a okay. And that's that's a great point. And although I don't do politics on this show, right? I just don't do it. I do the conspiracy of politics every day, but politics in general, I don't do. But earlier this year, our president uh, uh, announced a space force, and this space force made the the headlines on on all of uh, the networks, and. That was an interesting announcement. What would we need a space force for? I'm going to throw this at you, Mark. Did you hear about that? And if you did, what was your reaction? What would we need a space force for? I did hear about it, and my reaction was that it makes sense because it's not about fighting extraterrestrials. It's about monitoring the area that we occupy, such as where our satellite systems are, because if the, uh, another country knocks out our communications, that wouldn't be a good thing. So in realistic terms, a, a space force is just about getting ready to be necessary to, to uh, protect our orbiting communication satellites. And so you're suggesting that aliens didn't, you didn't think necessarily the alien connection first, 
that this was in in defense of our own uh, military and country. Right. I don't. I don't think. I don't understand how space force and aliens. How you would co- connect the two? I we we I, we have these myriad amounts of satellites uh, in the in our orbit that need to be uh, the the essential ones need to pre- be protected. So then you would need a space force up there to do it. I, I don't see how uh, aliens came into that conversation. Yeah, and uh, the I, you know what I did, and it's not that I'm a you know a, a UFO radio host because I am, but when I heard right. that, the first thing I thought about is what would you? It reminded me of Ronald Reagan's famous speeches that he did at the United Nations, right? Uh, you know about. Uh, uh, being attacked by E.T. and we would unite, we would forget all of our differences here on Earth and we would get together and and we would be Earthlings. For a few minutes. Right, right. for a few minutes, right, exactly. We would forget about those things. And so when this announcement for the Space Force came, I thought about aliens first. And the reason why is because if we need defense defensive measures in place for our satellites i'm assuming they're already there i'm assuming we already have that space force and if we don't what are we spending our money on right that's so i went the other way i went i went straight alien yeah more power to you for sure definitely i mean you know whatever whatever it is that excites your sensibility and and invigorates your spirit more power to you now, I wanted to get back uh, to, uh, to the movie. There was uh, a scene in the movie that uh, nailed me. And the way that you handled it was spot on. And it was the scene where you're looking at the photographs. And you went, aha. Okay? Tell the audience about that scene and what you looked at in this photograph. We'll talk about what happened after that. But you're looking at these photographs, and you weren't necessarily buying what he was selling, were you? Right. No, it's hilarious, because in the photograph, what you're referring to, I think there is, uh, in the sky, there's some um, UFOs, and you can you, you look, you can see kind of like these um, fuzzy or hazy squares or whatever around the UFOs as if that was, it was a manipulated uh photographs very obviously so that's what it was a cut and paste to a degree yeah however it was digitally or physically done yeah for sure and it was you, pretty obvious i'll tell you what man if i was trying to prove a point i wouldn't be waving those photos around right that'd, that'd be right. the last thing and, and your reaction see this is this is this is what was so cool about that scene you took one look at it and you were like now wait a minute here what do you think about that? You know, and 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 you went straight there. Uh, that was a pretty bold move uh, when you're sitting at a at a UFO conference, right? And and he's handing you these photographs, and then you suddenly call him out. Was that an uncomfortable moment? Not for me. It was funny. <laughs> it was it was great actually. And then what happened? What happened next? I don't know. I don't have a good memory. You tell me. Okay. I love it when you ask me the questions. That's cool. You know what? In the next break of radio host to radio host, I'm going to let you ask me questions. (laughs) We're going to turn this thing around. Is, Is you said, what is this square area around the photograph? And he said, well, look at it. And you said, I did. And then he said, well, then look at this other one. And your response was, I don't want to look at another photograph. I'm talking about this one right here. (laughs) And you said, what what is going on? Can't you see the square area? Now, and this was with UFO Bob. Now, do you think UFO Bob, you pointed it out to him. Was he in denial, do you think, about what you were showing him? Uh, Or do you think that he knew that it was manipulated. I, I I think he believed the photograph. I I think that he was into it. Uh, that's that's what I felt. I felt that he was he actually believed 
that uh, that photograph was real. Yes, that's what I believe. Now, describe because you don't show the the uh, close up of the photograph in the film. Um, and so it looked like there was a landscape and you could see some blue sky there. Um, what was it? Was it some 1950s flying saucer in there? I mean, what was it? What was in the picture? Yeah, I think it was like our conventional take on what a flying saucer would look like. I mean, I have no memory of that at this point, but as far as I remember, it was kind of like your classic interpretation of a flying saucer in a very, fuzzy sort of way, indistinguishable, indistinguishable sort of way, yeah. And what do you, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, Mark, is because today, and I know you don't spend a whole lot of time on the internet and, and surfing for this kind of stuff, but today, you're a filmmaker, you know how easy it is uh, with computer graphics and motion, how easy it is to manipulate something and, and add it to uh, a sequence. It, it's it's very easy to do. And so today, Correct. there is a lot of fake UFO footage out there. It is all over the internet. Uh, what do you, okay. what, yeah, um, and I know that you don't see it uh, uh, enough, but what do you think that does for society when so many people, just like UFO Bob, is is seemingly okay with it, right? And they they will uh, they'll look at it, and they probably know it's not real, but they are going to accept it as real. There are there are videos out there on YouTube that have a million views, right? A million, I mean, five hundred thousand views. And wow. I look at the video, and I go, well. That's the fakiest fake thing I've ever seen. But you look at the the comments, UFOs are here. We are not alone. This is amazing. I can't believe I'm watching this. And I'm just thinking to myself, I, everybody can't be that gullible. What do you think is going on? Well, I think that there's just a certain curiosity whether people are just curious. It incites their curiosity, and that's simply what's going on. Whether, you know, they, I think they want to test their own sensibilities to see themselves as this fake. Could this possibly be real? You know, there's that particular excitement. And then it just, I think it's just a matter of curiosity and testing their sensibilities at that point. When, uh, when you go back and look at the volume of UFO photographs that have been taken over the years, you know, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 70s, you know, to this day. But the original stuff on film with the film camera, lots mm -hmm. of stuff out there. There's lots. There's just books and volumes of it out there and, 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 and film footage, too, as well. Oh, I want to talk to you the difference between film and, and movie. We're going to do that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of film out there, and that I appreciate the most. Today, we don't have the volume of photographs that we had from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Why do you think that is? Do you think that it's because we're not being visited as much anymore? Or that it's a different kind of craft? Or that everything that was taken in the 40s, 50s, and 60s were hubcaps that were thrown in the air and frisbees? Uh, what do you think is going on? Okay, are you saying there's <laughs> are you saying there's more or less footage now uh, than before? What you... Well, it, re, the the photographs that were taken in the forties, fifties, sixties, you know, flying saucers. Yeah. You brought it up. You know, you said it right. The classic flying saucer. We don't have that today, mm -hmm. right? I don't see pictures of flying saucers. You know, I'll see plasma or I'll see a triangle craft. But I don't see the flying saucers with a dome on the top. Right, right. And, 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 and I think that's very, very informative. You see, our narrative has changed. It's just like bell bottoms, the flares, the boot cut, the straight leg. That happened within maybe 15 years or so as our fashions change. And our the way that we want to show UFOs has changed. In the 50s, it was flying discs and so forth, and that ended, lasted into the, into the 70s. Then the narrative had to shift, and we created 
new ideas of what UFOs would look like. It ain't, it's, it's not going to work anymore to show flying saucers because we've grown tired of that narrative. Now we have to form new crafts that look different. So that's why you've seen that chip because people got tired of the of the the fifties style and and now they created different uh, uh, vehicles and so forth for the aliens to uh, maneuver about in. So, as simple as that. You think so? So it's pop culture. It is. That's that's all it is. It's just like. You know, fins on cars in the 50s, uh, it, uh, they gradually disappeared in the 60s, and the narrative shifted. And then the cars in the 70s got jacked up and back, and, you know, it just did the same with the way that we want to perceive our UFOs. We, we, we need that shift. So it's corny now to see those discs, and we're not going to see those anymore. What were they discussing? We, 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 we need something else now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hear you on that. And when you were doing the interviews, we got about three minutes uh, for this. Uh, when you were doing the interviews for the Dundee Project, and you're setting up, and you're asking the questions, and you're you know you're you're doing your interviews. Uh, what kind of craft were they seeing? What what was it that they were describing? Well, these were these were larger crafts. These were actually habitable crafts. I, one guy that I was interviewing said that uh, the craft was at least, I'm not sure, it was like the size of the city of Chicago or something like that that he was on many, many times. So with all of these guys, it's, it's, it's far larger crafts than the usual discs for sure. That these are places where people, alien people conduct their experiments and their lives as well. So, um, what do you what, yeah. do you what do you think about that? Is it because look, I have heard the same things that you're describing right now, right? And a lot of it, and there are tens of thousands, if not millions, of people on this planet that will tell you the exact same story. Is everybody crazy, or is there something really going on? None of them are the exact same. Story, but what we do is we fuse similarities together to heighten our sense of uh, not only togetherness but of possibility that that this is real. And uh, I think for most of the people, uh, it's some biochemical anomaly in their mind that creates these hallucinations. And but I wouldn't want to ever discount that some of this stuff actually happens and that people are truly visited by other life forms, uh, I, I would never in a million years discount that. It would, for all I know, that's very possible and so forth, and that people have been taken up in ships and people have been visited and have interaction with, with other life forms. Um, and so I think that's just as true as the fact that most of these people uh, have, like I say, biochemical deficiencies and are, are triggering these hallucinations as well. So I think it works both ways. I guess I have a chemical imbalance. I knew I had issues. We'll pick this or, up. Or you may really be visited, you know. <laughs> Trust me, there is something going on, Mark. We'll, we'll pick this up when we come back. we got to take a break right here. Our guest tonight, filmmaker, screenwriter, playwright, Mark Borchardt is with us. We're talking about, of course, his new film, The Dundee Project. This is Faded Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Uh, Mark, what's your what's your Twitter? At More the Scarier. Say that again. At More the Scarier. More the Scarier. I just wanted to hear you say it. Yep. We'll be right back. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy. Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. 
Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Tepe. Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and my family is safe because of Numana Emergency Food Storage. Just go to the Numana banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Promo code Jimmy10. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our guest, Mark Borchardt. Filmmaker, screenwriter, playwright. His new film is called The Dundee Project. The links for it are up over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go and check it out. And when you get the the digital download, you will get uh, another, ooh, man, like 30 minutes of uh, bonus footage of uh, Mark out on the festival circuit. And I, I got to say, the film is great, but the uh, the extras that they've included – over there, Mark, are pretty cool, man. It's uh, it's really good stuff. My my hat's off to you. Nice. Now, uh, okay, this is this is one of the things that I find most interesting that is going on right now, and it started about ten years ago with the program called Ancient Aliens, which I don't know if you've seen, but uh, I don't watch TV. Right? If you've said that many times, you don't watch TV. This show, Ancient Aliens, Mark is uh, either number one or number two on all of cable television, right? 
And nice. it's it's huge. It's a huge show. And what it uh, suggests is that we're not only are we not alone, but we have been visited a lot in the distant past. You know, the pyramids in Egypt or, or you know, Gobekli Tepe or these different megalithic monuments that are all around the planet. There's it, 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 paintings and cave carvings and cave paintings that, that the suggestion of visitation is everywhere. But what has come along with that phenomenon in pop culture is there are four or five networks now on cable television with nearly 24 hours a day of UFO programming. It's like everywhere. Now, what does that suggest? Well, this is called America. This is a capitalistic society based on advertising, right? <laughs> That's what it is. Right. And advertisers want to pay for advertising where the most viewers are going to be. And that's where it's at. It's a crazy thing that is happening right now in pop culture when it comes to the ET question and visitation. What what do you what do you make of that? I, I know that you don't watch television, but certainly the phenomenon is there, and the networks are responding to it. Look at Netflix, for example. Stranger Things. Number one program on all of television last year, Stranger Things. You know what? What? What does that suggest to you about what is actually it going on? Just an interest in the eighties. Say what? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Great eighties soundtrack too, as well. And and it was. Well, I read the New York. I read the New York Times, so I'm aware aware of television as a, from an abstract from an abstract distance. And so, what does that suggest to you? I mean, well, well people are interested in reminiscing about the eighties. <laughs> that is pro Hobie Cat T-shirts. Do you remember those? Uh, yeah, kind of. Actually, it does ring a distant bell. Yeah, and the, I mean, what? I, I'm not so sure. Uh, how to take all of this, right? Is it that they are interested in the the subject or that they know that is that there is something going on and underlying all of this throughout the world is that everybody's accepted that E.T. is here and has been for a very long time? Well, there's something going on that they don't realize is that they're wasting their time sitting in front of a screen, but... but uh, no, um, yeah, I, I don't, again, like I say, I think it's just a, again, a uh, mutual pact of collective hysteria that goes from one object of desire to the next and so forth. I mean, you know, we've been around for hundreds of thousands of years, and this is nothing, you know, new under the sun. So, yeah, that's that would be my answer to that. And sorry to bring you down, Jimmy. No, no. You're See, the, what I find most interesting about this, Mark, is that you are outside of our community, right? You're outside. You right. happen to make a film about our community, which is great. Right. But you're outside of it. So uh, getting a fresh perspective on how it is viewed from the outside looking back in is what we all need to hear. I'm very interested on all of your views on this. No, absolutely. And there's another thing that's going on, too, as well, uh, which is paranormal TV and ghost hunting and and going out and, and, and trying to uh, videotape ghosts inside of homes. They're like Just like the UFO phenomenon, there is a, a huge cottage industry, huge, I mean, ginormous, of uh, paranormal groups going out ghost hunting and making a TV show about it. It's all over the place now. And I'm not sure how to take this. Is it because we know that there is life after death and that ghosts are real or that people just want to be scared? You know, what is it? People, people just want to be scared. I mean, um, you know, that. How, how would they know if there's life after death? And I'll tell you another thing. I, I'd be far more concerned about what you're doing in the here and now because once you die and it's like dang i'm dead man there's nothing happening here man i should have lived those last 80 years like that was the only life i had 
And uh, and which side of the fence are you on? How 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 would I how would I know what happens after you die? I mean, I assume you just take your last last breath and start the rot and so on and so forth. Or who knows? Maybe your your mind continues and that. I, uh, you're asking the wrong guy. Uh, you know how the hell would I know that? No, I'm asking the right guy actually because what you just said is the exact uh, conundrum. Right, that we have been wondering about since the dawn of Well, you man. guys have. I have it. I don't give a damn. You know, well, I'm just like, <laughs> living my life thinking, man, I'm glad I got my health, my well-being. I have my wits. The last thing I'm thinking about is what happens after. I, I don't have time for that. It, the the possibility of life after death or a loved one, this is another example, a loved one coming back that has died in your family and coming back and possibly visiting you later. I mean, and and so for, and for, for what for what for for what would be the purpose of that? This is so interesting. Say I'm sorry, <laughs> could be. How about just hello? And, and well, they they had, they had about eighty years to do that. They so, should have thought you know, twice what they were doing with their time. <laughs> right, right. Have uh, so what you're suggesting here is you have never seen a ghost. Not that I'm aware of, no. Uh, and I and again, like I say, I I I I um I actually I, I uh, based upon circumstantial evidence, I do believe that 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 could exist resonance from the uh, from a, a previous life. I I, I, I don't doubt that at all. And this is this is such a great conversation. So you are in your room, you're at night, you're trying to get to sleep, and you see some kind of form at the foot of your bed. And you sit up and you look at it. Now, let's just go here for a second. And you look and you say to yourself, that is a ghost. That is something in my room. Does that... And, and then it just disappears. You wake up the next day and you're thinking about what just happened. Does that change you? Are you changed now? Or are you still the same person that's having this conversation with me right now on the air? I, I think that you're changed. And I think you're changed probably for the rest of your life because you now have to consider the ramifications of what you just saw in with the implications of it. So I think, I don't think that it will, will haunt you to that great of a degree, but I think, yeah, it will definitely change your uh, perspective on, on things for sure. One of the things, and you brought this up earlier, uh, you suggested that science is, is solid and you can't, you can't, you know, argue with science, right? The amount you, you of stuff. Can't, because you can't, you can't argue with it at all there's there's no argument against science right and so it's absolute and and today uh theoretical physicists physicists astrophysicists i could go on and on and on are now firmly uh looking into uh, a parallel world a multiverse type of situation quantum mechanics quantum theory uh, qubits where the, the the atomic structure of things operates in another version of us that reacts uh, you know next to you mark to your right to your left are infinite parallel versions of you they're just a little bit different right and in that world today you had a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch and in the parallel world you had tomato soup you didn't have you know but it still looks like you you know it's almost and they are okay with that because quantum and qubits and, and atomic uh, particles are entangled and operating with themselves at these great distances. Now, what this suggests is not only parallel worlds, but that there is something right next to you right now. You just can't see it. Now, this is where science is. And this was science fiction 10 or 20 years ago. This changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's that's completely believable, and I don't think it changes everything in, in any way, shape, or form. But um, 
You know, there's there's also that that may or may not be the case. I mean, I, I think that it can very uh, very much be the case, but also scientifically, uh, everything is actually predetermined down to the sub atomic article, it can be mathematically predetermined from the beginning of whatever the beginning is because every breeze in the tree, everything is is predicted from that first splitting of the particle or however that came about. It's a very scary thought that everything is ultimately predetermined. Mm-hmm. So along with the parallel universe theory, you may have to deal with that theory as well. And, and that probably is pretty darn true because every every subatomic go, subatomic particle is is predictable from the the beginning to the end and it has a particular pattern and not one thing can be changed in any way because even that change is part of the prediction so you know this might be all predetermined down to the down to the split second down to us talking right now and and, Correct. and yeah this was re- this is determined trillions zillions of years ago of that's having right. this conversation and it's unavoidable that's right and in in our community where you know free will is something that is discussed a lot well, well free will is pre 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 free will would be part of that premeditation i know isn't that strange is that a paradox right is that well, it's sim- not a paradox because it's an illusion free will is an illusion it's it's a well, free will is just sound waves and it's an idea associated with sound waves and so on and so forth. So it's not as hip as you think it is. So you are, you're on the set, you're on the set and you're shooting a scene and you've got your script in your hand that you have rewritten and you, you've rewritten the page 10 times. And now you're on the set and you're shooting. And then suddenly you decide to change your mind and change a line in the dialogue, and you are now talking to your lead about this change on the page. Is that free will, or is that predetermined? Do you think? No, why? Why? Do you think change is just yeah? Yeah. Do you think you are making a free will decision at that point, or you were going to say it anyway? No, because that's just a simplistic idea of the, the math, all of this is, is, is a use of language, is the word change. If we take out that word and say modify, it's, oh, it's, just, it's just another, why don't we just say it's another action? It's a, everything is an action, another action that's been premeditated. Take out the word change, change sounds very dramatic, like you're making this decision. Well, actually change just means another action. Another, there's, that's all it is, is another action. That was in So when you, you get behind the simple idea of that word change, modify it into a slightly more sophisticated one entitled another action, that then you again lose the idea of free will. Yes, and I've had what you were saying right there. I've had this discussion with so many people where, look, I... I understand the concept of free will. I understand the community that I'm in, and I have an open mind. But math is math, and atoms and photons and electrons and everything else in that subatomic world is going to do what they are going to do anyway. And your body is made up of the same atoms that rocks are. And that's <laughs> the universe is going to do what it's. You think you're making a decision. And that's fine, but you were going to make that decision anyway. And I'm going against the grain of my own community, Mark. Okay, so, and I'm agreeing with you. But that's a strange concept for most people to uh, to digest when it comes to free will. Look at the great song by Rush, right? It's talking about mm-hmm. what we're talking about right now. I'm talking about the song Free Will. And do we actually have it? Is free will... A real concept or is math math and things are going to play out the way that they're going to play out no math is math things are going to play out the way they're going to play out there there is no such thing as free will free will is just an illusion because once you scientifically examine it for a number of seconds you realize it's just these article these particles in motion and you really you have nothing to do with it essentially you're just part of this 
the machinations of the universe and so forth. It's okay because w w within a minute we'll forget this free will conversation. We'll be back to thinking we have free will. So in a, in a, in a sense, it's scary because you're into, lo into something in, in lockstep abstracted from yourself. But, you know, we, for we, we just we humanize ourselves instantly, forget it, and we think we're going about in the world making all these decisions. So we're so it's back to being a okay again. You know, we're in our, in our realm of free will again in our minds. Now, how do so everything you, works out? It's all right. So you sit down. You're sitting down. You're with Getty Lee, right? Mm -hmm. How do you have this conversation with Getty Lee? Are you going to be able to convince him of this? No. Why would I want to do that? I mean, it's, it wouldn't work to my benefit. It's I'm going to convince myself. Hey, if I'm hungry, man, I'm going to get that. Uh, Steak or something that that's that's what I'd be thinking. But uh, you know, yeah. I mean, what what would be the only reason why you try to convince anyone of anything is if you had some form of loneliness and you needed to have some form of commiseration with someone. Uh, as w there are people that do need uh, psychologically to c continue to convince people of things, and it's a psychological need. And there's other people who who could care less. They're their own entity. That's just the way it plays out. Do you deal with that uh, same mindset with those that are around you, friends, family, coworkers, when this discussion comes up? Because it, I'm sure it comes up a lot. What discussion? The, the, the discussion of free will or that we this are... It's the first time I've ever had it. No. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever had it. The best of my recollection... I don't, in uh, 52 years, I do not remember discussing this. And you're, you're so elegant in your, in your description and of, of, of where you are at with this, but you've never had this conversation before or thought about it. Well, I thought about it to the best of my knowledge. I have not had this conversation, um, about free will and may have occurred. I have no memory of it. Now, uh, as we start to wrap up here, I wanted to uh, uh, end on this. The, um, the world, the world, not only our country, uh, our world, Milwaukee, right, our world, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of division right now that is going on where I, don't, I never felt it like this. You're 52. I'm 55. Uh, you know, we've grown up in the same general area, too, as well. Um, I've never felt it like this. What do you think is causing these friends and neighbors and people and people that don't even know each other right now to just get so polarized and on the opposite sides and, and this division that is going on? What do you think is happening? Um, not that, because that, that's actually not occurring. That's it's a topic of conversation through the newspaper and the electronic media and that what what when that did occur was in the 60s and 70s with the generation gap where there was actual divisiveness between generations and ideology and that was at its apex and this is this is not really true this is more hallucinatory and it's it's now a hobby of people to think this and it's continually embellished by the newspaper and, and TV and so forth. And, it, and it's, it, it, it's, it's, this goes along with a whole range of topics where people just go on to it and they repeat things and it begin, begins to metastasize into collective, uh, you know, notions. And, and we're, so yeah, that it doesn't really exist, but it's something to occupy people's minds when they're not, when they should actually be writing the great American novel or something like that. But this divisiveness doesn't exist. It only exists in hallucinatory terms, but it did tangibly exist in the 60s and 70s where it was like empirical. It was going down. Right, right. And why, what do you think is the agenda for doing that? Because I, I, I tend to agree oh, with it's, what it's you're It's economics. Saying. It's economics because you keep repeating it, and then the television stations and the print ads, they bolster their membership, their readership, and then they can charge the advertisers more. Hey, we've got a million people watching in. You, you need to, we're, we're jacking up our ad rates. So as long as the 98%, you know, 
believe in this and get into this, there, there's money to be made. And I, I see it going on. It's like they're pushing it, right? They're pushing it. They're they're forcing mm-hmm. it onto us uh, that we are divided. You should be angry. You should hate. You should start these arguments. And it's 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 a crazy thing for us to sit back and witness and watch it going on. And you have to ask yourself. Yeah, I, I'm not, because for me it does not exist. Again, like I say, it bolsters the subscribers because it gets everyone talking about it. It continues to be of interest, and they can jack up those those ad rates. And, I, and, I, and I'm not saying that in conspiratorial terms. But there is a economic reason for this because it, as long as you can keep this collective hysteria going and reap the financial rewards from it on news shows and such, uh, this this propaganda will will continue. I mean, I'm not down with it. I know that it doesn't. Re- it, I mean, exists to some degrees, of course. Absolutely, you can't deny that, but not in the way that it's being embellished because for the. 90% of the people are, are functionally, they're, they're normal. And, you know, it's, you're, you're just talking about a small part of the populace and then creating this hysteria like it's the majority when it's just a, a, a very small amount of people actually involved in such uh, negative polemics. So, uh, so well said, Mark, and I, I really appreciate that. Where can everybody reach out to you? Oh, they at they can go to my Twitter at more the scarier or Facebook at mark dot orchard dot ninety six and and then go to the uh, uh, they can uh, visit the Dundee Project dot com and and uh, check out a copy of the Dundee Project and I'm gonna uh, you know one of the next things I'm going down to uh, Houston and shooting a music video with Marzi uh, Montezari, and it's another thing that I've been doing is, is a lot of music videos. I just did Sleeper Sound and Tenement and Frontman and the Afterthoughts, and, you know, so that's another way that I that just engage with people it is through these creative projects, and they can follow all that at, at those places that I've uh, told you as well. Thank you so much, and I look forward to having you back on the program. And I'm just going to tell you right now, if you ever want me on Cinema Fireside, it would be an honor. Well, then we'll do that, because uh, life's too short to play games, so we'll look forward to doing that, Jimmy. Thank you so much, Mark. I, I look forward uh, so much to this conversation. It was all of that and much more for me in the audience. Thank you so much. And uh, enjoy the cold up there. I know it's December. The holidays are coming. You're in Milwaukee. <laughs> How much snow is up there right now? None. None? It's yet to come. Really? It's, 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 it's a nasty cold right now because of that moisture. But um, the snow has yet to arrive. So... Right now, it's a blessing that it's it's not here yet. There's nothing like at, when you stand out and and face the wind off of Lake Michigan. You have never felt cold until you have experienced that, and I don't care who you are. <laughs> yeah, and you are exactly right because I've experienced that in the morning off Lake Michigan, and it is a worst one of the worst things in the world. And you never thaw out. Thank you so much, Mark. Be safe and be well, and happy holidays to you. Happy holidays, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Great conversation. Mark Borchardt. Again, it's More the Scarier on Twitter, at More the Scarier. Uh, Facebook is over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. And, of course, the links for the Dundee Project are right there for you. Highly recommended. Go and check it out. And the bonus stuff is really great, too, as well. Our meal is Jimmy Church. It says Fade to Black. I'm going to get out of here and come back after this break and take some phone calls. I'll be right back. Stay with us. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, Reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. 
hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autograph fade to black t-shirt. Seriously, go back Lee Tappy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Teppy. Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and my family is safe because of Numana Emergency Food Storage. Just go to the Numana banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Promo code Jimmy10. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Man, I can't keep my chair up. Can't keep it up. It just... It's time for a new chair. Do you guys remember, I want to thank Mark uh, Borchardt, an amazing conversation uh, tonight, and I, I really look forward to this. And if uh, if you're familiar with Mark and and you understand where he is and where he, uh, you know, who he is and where he's coming from, then you totally got and enjoyed uh, this conversation tonight because he is a very talented, very unique individual, and I want to thank him for that. I was, man, I enjoyed every minute, every word of the conversation tonight. Um, that being said, I wanted to get that out of the way before I, uh, I'm not going to lose my thought. Do you guys remember the squeaky chair? Remember the squeaky chair? Remember that? You remember that? And I, I went through like two chairs and, 
in three months, the squeaky chair. And yes, I do remember this. Yes. <laughs> The squeaky chair. Well, I, you know, and so I went out. I got this one, dropped all that dosh on it, and it's lasted me almost, man, like three, four years. And it's not squeaking. Look, you see? It, it doesn't squeak. It makes the the arms are a little loose now after all these years. But um, I can't. It won't stay up. I've I've tried every lock feature, every this, every that. It just it just it goes down. It's time for a new chair, you know. Uh, we got Rita uh, a racing chair. It's like some kind of Recaro Ferrari. I forget the brand, something like that. It's a crazy nice chair, and she's got it going on. So maybe maybe I've I need to upgrade. I need to upgrade. All right, I'm opening up the phone lines. Three two three eight two five five zero four five or three two three. Where where are my phone numbers? Three two three two seven five nine six nine five or eight one eight nine two one six nine two nine. And uh, there you go. Let's. Uh, we've got a few minutes left uh, before the end of the show. We'll open up the conversation. Let's go to every code four zero eight. You are up on fade to black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. It's Deb from Sacramento. Hi, Deb from Sacramento. How are you? Is it snowing up there? No, it's very cold, though. No snow yet. Yeah, it's, um, it's cold. We, we don't get snow very often, unfortunately. I very much enjoyed uh, your conversation with Mark. And um, the thing that I love, I mean, everything he said, he's such an intelligent person. Yep. and Very engaging himself. Yep. Um, I love it when he said, you know, I already know what I know, but I don't know what other people think. And so I want to listen to them. And I think if we all had that attitude, we'd all be a lot smarter. He see, that's the thing. When uh, you have a guy like Mark, look, Mark is smart, right? Okay. So that, that, that is, Mm -hmm. that is the reality of that. But, and he's creative and yes, he just completed this, this short film on what of all things, a UFO conference, right? So, uh, you know, the, the mm-hmm. film comes out. I want to know, I want to know what drew him to the conference. I want to know when you watch it and you see who he's engaged with, I want to know these things, you know, the obvious, you know, did you see anything in the skies? You know, do you believe in UFOs? Okay. There's that part of it, but it's how the, our community and conferences like this and us and UFOs and are perceived outside of our community, looking in, coming from somebody uh, like him. So he's the absolute perfect guest, you know, and, and I want to know, you know, and his answers were incredible. The conversation was incredible. And and we need that perspective. It puts us back into focus a little bit. It's like uh it's like being a Libra, right? It's the scales, it's the balance, it's the yin and the yang. Absolutely. Yeah, and I like that he doesn't back down either. You know, just because it's popular somewhere else, it's like, well, nope, I still, you know, he stands his ground and but he does it with respect. You know, and not putting other people, you know, on the defensive or anything. He just offers his opinion, and you know, so I like that too. I respect that. He's he's um, been doing it. Say, oh, he's, he's been doing that for years, and that is, and yeah. I set that tone at the beginning of this conversation tonight. He has never changed, right? He does his thing. And you go mm-hmm. and you watch his interviews and you just watch his inter- and, and wa- or watch another documentary or things from his past or whatever. He is the same guy. And, and so once you know uh, who, what he is and, and, you know, what he is about and you listen to this conversation tonight, you got Mark Borchardt in, in, in spades. That was a great conversation. I'll do it again. I cannot it wait was. to have him back on the show. All right, you were going to say, and then? Oh, two real quick things. Your daughter, Nicole, has a great radio voice on the commercial. I hope she's interested in radio because she would be a natural. I think she inherited your talent. She, uh, she, she, took, oh, um, well, she took some voiceover classes in college. And uh-huh. uh, and so this year, one of the projects was just that, and to get credit. And so, 
well, if she's going to do a voiceover in a spot for a radio show, go go to Pops. Pops has got a radio show, so she cut there it. Go. Yeah, she she uh, cut it and sent it to me. One take. I I was just like, that's it. And so I aired it. She got credit, and there you go. But I'm not going to pull it out because it's really cool. She's really good. Yeah. And speaking of your radio show, now last time I spoke with you, you wanted to pull the video camera out of the bunker cam, so I have a solution for you. Mm. Since you, since you don't want to do it all the time, I think you should have the video camera in there on fader nights because that's the time that you spend with us and take our calls and engage the most with us. And so have it in there on Thursdays. We'll pull it out the rest of the week so that you have some off time. That's my solution. Ah, oh, very smart. <laughs> very smart. And and Rita's listening, so we'll see. You know, she's the boss. You know, I can go I can go after the show and go, you know what, I'm just done with the bunker cam. She's like, tough. <laughs> <laughs> So what? That's great. Yeah. That's great. So what? The ca- you know, the bunker cam stays. They want it. It stays. It's the life you chose, church. Now get back in there and turn the bunker cam on. That's that's the answer. So, but 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 maybe maybe. So there you go. Thank you so much, Deb. Be safe and be well. Thank you, Jimmy. You too. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Area code eight three zero. You're up next. Hey, this is Neil. Jimmy. Hey, Neil. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, the uh, I wanted to talk to to you about the uh, the plans of the aliens. You know, a lot of people. We've been doing a lot of these alien conferences, and you know, proving that the aliens exist. You know. Well, I think we have to move on to a different stage. Okay. Because the government, you know, they had that uh, to the stars. They pretty much, um, you know, admitted they they got showing footage of aliens, you know, that uh, jet, you know, uh, and all that information like that. The problem is... The Earth has been a slave planet for for these aliens for a long time. Okay. Well, you, I don't want to get you sideways here, Neil, but you brought up conferences first. So let's stay on that subject. Yeah, but, yeah. well, what I'm saying is, you know, you can only kill the dead horse a thousand, thousand times, you know. And uh, they're really not getting no, you know, they're getting some new information, but we have to get down to the root of the problem. And I know what the root is, you know. Uh, they're abducting us, you know, they got a lot of proof of people getting abducted too, you know. But um, they have some good aliens and then they got the bad ones. Okay, I'm, I'm listening. So uh, um, pro- what, when we talk about abductions, Neil, um, before I say what do you think is going on, have you yourself either witnessed or been part of anything like that? Well, I've been a, I think I've been abducted because one time I was in a vision and um I was running around in I think it was a spaceship and they had three people sitting in a chair and then and some people I was like hiding in the wall, you know, and I could see these black people had guns in the hallway and I think they couldn't see me. And like, I started running and then, uh, I saw these three people in a chair, like some kind of starship, you know, cause you know, I think I was in a, a UFO, you know, and all at once, bam, you know, something hit me in the head and I felt it, you know, and that's the last thing I remember. Uh, but, um, well, that's the last thing you time, want. You, you don't want to get abducted and then get knocked in the head. That's not cool. Well, I was trying to get away. <laughs> you were trying to get away on the ship? Yeah. <laughs> I think I was, <laughs> I was right. They had guns, and I was, like, hiding inside the wall. I don't know if I got some powers of invisibility or something, you know. Because one time, uh, 
Like in North Dakota, I ran from this uh, devil worshiper and people from Louisiana, and they followed me all the way to uh, North Dakota. And one night they came down, and I heard, you know, I was laying in my bed, and I heard this woman said, here, let me put something on you shiny so we could see you. And I could feel her pin it on. You know, she pinned it right on my, you know, shirt, like. Okay, forget about that. You know, forget about that, Neil. Yeah. Hold on, back up. You just said you were running from devil worshiping people in Louisiana all the way to North Dakota. Yeah. Okay, hold on. You can't you can't just say that and then just just move on in the conversation. What happened in what? in Louisiana that you got chased out of town? Were you running from them or were they chasing you? What happened? Okay, I did it. I was doing an investigation in the churches. The uh, spirit told me to go among the churches and learn. And I said, "Look, I don't need to learn." You know, I was like almost arguing with him. Like, uh, I know more that stuff than the preacher knows. You know, and they said, "No, we need you to go in there and see what's happening." So you so, did. You know, I had to. So I was. A, so I was psychic, like right. And one time I went to a place and you know, a healing service just to see what's happening in the Catholic church thing. And this dude went, the preacher went around putting oil on their head, forehead, right? And when he got to me, I had my hands out meditating like this, you know, with my arms out, you know, out, not out, but, you know, with my hands open kind of thing. And he opened the vow, he took something out of his uh, jacket, and he put this jelly stuff on my wrist. And I started both of them, you know, and it was a lot. It was a lot, a bunch of it. And I said, what the heck is all this, you know? And then I was the last one, so we got up to start praying. And all at once, uh, uh, my hearing went away and my eyesight, and I couldn't speak no more, and I was blacked out. I woke up around 20 minutes later standing up, and the nuns were in my face saying, Neil, you could wake up. Neil, you could wake up. And I opened my eyes and I was like, what the heck? You know, and I'm standing up. How in the heck do you get drugged? And uh, I'm still standing, (laughs) you know. And uh, there were some other things. I was, you know, went to different churches and I had to leave. And, you know, well, uh, so, but, uh, okay, so then how, how, how did you get chased? How, how did that happen? Did you upset somebody? Did they find out that you were there undercover? How do you know that they, the, the Satan thing came into play? And Neil, I've only got, uh, I've only got about 10 minutes left and we got a lot of stuff to answer here. How did you find out that this was okay. satanic? How did you find out it was satanic? All right. All right. Then I went to another church, uh, and I was, you know, you know, you know, checking it out, you know, and this, this spirit followed me home and I knew he was, uh, there and he was, they were trying to do something like, uh, to me or something. So I was kind of in my mind, I said, I'm gonna lay here like a dead, uh, fish. Cause they got this fish. They, uh, if one, person comes and they nibble on you and then they go get some more friends and they go, you know, keep on coming back. Right. So I was just trying to listen to see what was going on. And I heard that spirit say, I was doing this and he was talking to one of his friends or somebody and whatever they were doing, he said, I was do, I did this to Adam long ago, just like I'm doing to him. And I said, oh, boy, I got mad, too. And I says, okay, you are the Christ, and I'm the Father. Come to the Father. And all them spirits that that uh, devil had, it came on top of me. I felt it. And then I left. That's when I left out of town. You know, I said, and they followed me all the way to North Dakota. How do you know they followed you? How how do you know they followed you? How do you know they followed you? Oh, I could hear them. I'm psychic. Okay. Oh, so the spirits followed you to South Dakota. Yeah, but uh, they could be invisible aliens because, see, the aliens have technology where, because I could see the invisible beings. They're everywhere. I mean, 
And I've seen some aliens before where they're invisible. Well, they're not wearing a cloak or nothing. Because you can have two, two different ways. You could go into the invisible uh, accelerator and be invisible for the rest of your life. Or you could wear a cloak. You see what I'm saying? I do. But how do you know that they were from? Because what you had said is you were they chased you all the way from the, the satanic uh, church, f- chased you all the way to South Dakota. So what I'm saying is, how do you know it was them from New Orleans or from Louisiana? Yeah, it was from Lafayette. Uh, I knew it was them because when I got to North Dakota, whatever was on me, they jerked it off of me, you know, they took it back. And, um, so, uh, what they do, you know, um, it was at a Catholic church and I knew the spirit followed me home because, you know, I could sense. see when you central perception, uh, you have to activate it. See, we're, I'm gonna give example, Jimmy, we're artificial intelligence. If you don't know how to turn on the program to start seeing, like closing your eyelids, you know, looking at clouds, um, you could get on the internet and look at uh, clouds in the face, and you could watch the clouds on film, and you could actually see them moving their mouth and stuff, okay? Once you get your telepathy going, you become a higher conscious being because you're more of aware of, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Interesting. Yeah, and yeah, but see, I'm trying. That's why I'm trying to do the open eye project to teach people. Look at the clouds. You have to uh, when the dawn hours come, when the sun goes down, they're in the trees. So if you're looking at the trees, like the movie Predator, you could half see them and half not. When you develop your eyes to see them, that's how the um, artificial intelligence works in the human, you know, flesh. You see what I'm saying? But you have to activate it. But you have to know how to do it. But see, no one everywhere, not no psychics, you know, even, you know, these UFO people, they don't know what I'm talking about because I'm pretty much the only one doing scientific research in this field. You see what I'm saying? So when you, when you got to North Dakota... What happened next? I mean, I understand that they followed you from Lafayette. Uh, wasn't Lafayette, wasn't that from, um, what was that That vampire series on Showtime? True Blood. Wasn't that in Lafayette, or that was another city? Anyway, so. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. I don't know either. So y- y- you get to uh, North Dakota. What happens next? I, are they still chasing well, the first- you? Yeah, the first night I got at the place where I, you know, got the job. They gave me a place to stay, and I worked, you know, working the off field. They pulled it off of me. I felt them jerk it off. Right. From, you know, first they jerked off, and they went after my leg part, and they took everything uh, back, you know. But they had to do it physically. They couldn't do it by the word. See, You see what I'm saying? They didn't do it. (laughs) Uh, These alien technology, I know all the technology. I'm going to give you an example. The planet that they blew up between Mars and Jupiter, I'm going to talk about the technology. Uh, I know how to blow up a planet. It's very easy. The only thing you got to do is take two ships with big laser uh, machines and shoot at the north and south pole, and then it's just going to start generating. And then it's going to blow up, okay? So I know a lot of technology. The other one is, uh, the other technology they're doing, you know, uh, Venus? Venus used to be in the green part. If you look at Venus, they got a bulge in it. What happened was, if you take another planet or a spaceship and run into it, it, it's spinning the opposite way. Okay, if you flip over the planet upside down, it's going to spin the opposite way. You see what I'm saying? So that's all technology stuff. You see what I'm saying? So I know a lot of things that's going on. It's the same thing with Earth. I've, I've often thought about that. Why Why do we rotate the way that, you know, they talk about clockwise or... It depends if you're... What view you're looking at. 
if it's forward or backwards. But we'll pick up this conversation tomorrow night, Neil. It's a fader night, so I'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you about the technology because I'm really scientifically know a lot of things. Right. And uh, these spirits, they're attacking me. I have to use, I have to sleep with a, a machete every night. I use sage and I use firecrackers. They attack my feet and I throw these firecrackers around my feet and around my car and it actually blows them up. You could kill these darn things, you know? All right, <laughs> well, well, we'll talk about this tomorrow night. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Neil. I got to get out of here. Thank you so much. All right. Have have a good See you night. Later. Have a good night. Uh, always a great conversation with Neil. Let's go to uh, Eric. Eric, what's going on, man? No, you, you know I got to go meet this guy because I, I mean I'll tell you. Let me just say this: you, we saw that poll earlier that had uh, Tyler and and Nap and Nori, but. But nobody gets calls like that, and that's what separates you and puts you at the cream of the crop, in my opinion. Oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> Seriously, though. Stop. I mean, this, we got this, that guy is a great storyteller. I'm not sure if he's trolling you or if he really sincerely means everything he's telling you. I'll, I mean, have you figured that And I'll always take uh, Neil's call. Yeah, Neil's awesome. Yeah, Neil's awesome. Neil's awesome. So what's on your mind, man? No, I, the, your guest, uh, it was classic, because I don't know, it was about a third of the way into the show, and you, and you posed the scenario to him, and then he just came right out and said, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, let me tell part. you, man. Let me tell you, he is, he is, he's talented, he's smart, he's cool, he's fun, and that was a great, great, great show tonight. And um, I, somebody pinch me, man. I, you know, Mark Borchardt was on Fade to Black, and it just don't get no better, man. And uh, and he was, you know, he uh, he doesn't do stuff like he's a radio show host, right? And you can go and listen to his shows and and check out the radio station there in Milwaukee, one hundred four point one, and and he's got it going on. But he doesn't go on other shows. He doesn't like to get interviewed. He doesn't like to talk. He do, he doesn't know. He just doesn't care. He doesn't care, you know. And no, he's a cool dude. I, uh, he's, he's way cool. Now. And, he's way cool. And, and you know what's weird is he's from Menominee Falls, and I actually lived there for one year, and it was the worst year in my in my life, and I'll never forget. It. But the people there were the coolest people I think I've ever met in any state I've ever visited. So he just this guy puts off a vibe where he's just really a real person. I dig that about him. Man, as real as it gets. And if you know, yeah. go check out have you seen the Dundee project yet? No, I'm gonna watch it though. <laughs> just sure. go and check it out, man. He is he's amazing. And and when you get the digital download, there's another thirty minutes of interviews with him. Go and check that out. Okay, you know, he didn't want me to mention this tonight, but uh, I'll say that he, 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 people are going to go research. He was on David Letterman five times, you know, and go wow. and go and watch some of the David Letterman interviews, man. They're just awesome. And uh, that's, that's, <laughs> there you go, man. Mark Borchardt was on Fade to Black. And, okay, so here's my, here's my theory, by the way. I'm not really a theory. Here's what I'm proposing is we have him come out to Soul Tech next year. Oh, he would be great. Series. Yeah, he would be the great. The project at East City. Yeah, he, awesome. he would be great. He would be great up at East City and let him film and, yeah. and do his thing. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We should yeah. do that. I would Rita, pay extra for that, by the way, if you want to, if you need like some, if we need to get him there somehow. No, we'll take care of it. Well, <laughs> this isn't a charity organization, man. All you need no, to you do, are. just show up and bring me another ACDC t-shirt. That's all you need to do. Okay. <laughs> No. And that tie dye was pretty. You got to admit that tie. That tie dye is cool, man. But I wear that ACDC all the time. All right, I got to get right, out of right. here, man. I got to okay, roll brother, some credits. You. I'll see you tomorrow night. All right. All right. Night. Have a good night. And that wraps another episode of Fade to Black. I got to thank Mark Borchardt. Amazing, and uh, all of his, all of his links are up at uh, JimmyChurchRadio.com, and you can follow him at More the Scarier on Twitter. All right, there you go. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. It is Fader Night. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hill J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. 
Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. Spawcast on and copyrighted 2018 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. It's Fader Night. Teresa Yanaris is going to be here. But until then, everybody be safe. Go Beckley Tepe. Tepe.